Today's sponsor of the Vision Quest podcast is 920 Hat Company. Leather patch hats are in, and 920 Hat Company is here to hook you up with your very own custom hat. All patches are lasered on top grade genuine leather and on popular brand hats like Richardson and FlexFit. Whether you're looking to show off your business or want a one-of-a-kind hat for yourself, 920 Hat Company can do it all. All the hats are handcrafted right in the Fox Valley, but worn across America. With over 500 hats in stock, they guarantee fast turnaround times. Honestly, Liam, you know, looking at these hats, solid, right? Yeah, they're pretty, I like them. I like that patch, that patch itself. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, one of a kind stuff. Uh, I know his name is Trevor. Uh, he does great work. He's actually gotten what? I think we got some a knit hat coming. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we got that coming. So uh, we're really excited to have these guys on board as a sponsor. So uh, get uh, get down to check them out on Facebook. I believe they're on Instagram. Uh, check them out, man. They got the best hats, I think, in the Fox Valley, if not in the state. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, get down to 920 Hat Company on social media and check them out. All right, everybody. We are back. It's been a minute. Uh, kind of... It hasn't been that long, actually. It's only been like maybe a couple days since I've since we've done so. Last week it was. It hasn't been that long. What am I talking about? It's been forever. It's been forever since we talked to this guy, Lucas Stelt. Uh, it's good to have these breaks, though, because we have a lot to talk about. So we get to cover quite a bit and kind of see what's been going on with you now that we've had Fargo. And now that we've had Worlds kind of go by, there's some stuff we can kind of probably touch on there. But you have talking points that you want to get to, which I am not going to get in the way of. You wanted to start off talking about uh, some Fargo with women's freestyle, right? Yeah, I've been waiting to talk about women's freestyle for a while, yeah. the high school season and stuff. But but I thought, well, let's get through the season, like the, the, the year, you yeah. know, Fargo. Yep, yep, wrap it Fargo, up. Yeah. You know, I I mean, as a side note, I really like where Fargo's at, like, or the, I guess it's the national championship, Fargo's a city. Yeah. Um, or town. I like it, like, placed where it's at a lot of people complain oh it should be earlier whatever i like where it's at because if you don't make a world team you still have a, tr- a big tournament left you know that's significant to kind of go out with a bang you know kind of yeah to close out the year the you know o- what i mean only thing that sucked that i saw for and this is just liam's age group was that the i think the um mm-hmm. in colorado is coming up on the 12th or 13th i mean you get you get a better look at where you're at for going into that tournament but it just seemed like maybe if he got hurt and then you wanted to go for worlds, then you kind of you know, kind of screwed or whatever. But I didn't see a lot of like crazy wrestling where guys were just getting injured left and right or anything like that. But well, I would say um, typically, yeah, if you're a cadet, you never do world, you never do Fargo. No, if you're if you're a world team member or Pan Am oh, team yeah, member, yeah, no, 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 right, right. So so Liam, yeah. Liam and it, you, he had the op- like wrestling out in Colorado is to to qualify for U15. For the for the world team of U fifteen, so it's not. Oh, like, is that when is it? That's coming up on the twelfth, twelfth and thirteenth. Yeah, it's uh. So next week, next week, I believe so. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So, but yeah. not like it's not like it was right on top of each other, but just kind of. I guess it would give you a better look at where you're at, kind of for U fifteen, anyways. It's, well, it's pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but um. But here, you know, we could talk, actually. I'll kind of we'll talk about that a little bit later too. Yep. That's the age thing. But um, I like where Fargo's at for me because for us, I'll be honest. We I, we talked we were talking before we went on air and yep. about Fargo and like how horrible the Greco was there and <laughs> you know and people get mad at me. Greco people get mad at me when I say no, it's not even Greco. It's freestyle without grabbing the legs. It's pathetic. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Pathetic. The referee, the refereeing is atrocious. They don't force the guys up. I tell I, 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 I'll repeat this. What I told you off there. Yeah. We tell the guys, hey, hang back, don't do anything. Because the referee ain't gonna get this dude wrestle. He's bent over. He's blocking with his head. Right. His chest. He's forty miles away. <laughs> Greco in Fargo is like watching molasses. Like Greco internationally is a sprint. It's six minute sprint. Yeah. And um, in, in the United States, it's it's a pathetic. It's really pathetic. Um, you know. So I mean, when guys watch Greco in Fargo, it's like, dude, just you, you, you know, if you watch, like, there'll be certain matchups. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, kind of like in probably any kind of wrestling, there'll be certain match want to watch out for yeah. it'll be real greco but uh yeah i mean i like where it's at but for us i'm like dude it's it's like all we're out there to do is make highlights so because, because it doesn't mean anything well, it, it's, it's a completely useless tournament tell me you know? tell me your thoughts on this though then too because now you have the girls out there and the boys and obviously we're going to be talking about girls pretty soon but with that mm-hmm. being said do you think in my opinion i would have liked it if it was spread out more 
If you had what, what do you well, if you, you had one chunk on a weekend and then you had another chunk, of, and this is me just brainstorming because I don't know exactly the logistics <laughs> of how many kids, but like going through one whole week was pretty exhausting. You know what I'm saying? Like one from one Thursday all the way over to almost like another Monday. That's a lot of wrestling, man. Well, try try doing it for the last twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right? Honestly, I I for so, it's like it's like a punishment somehow you enjoy. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> I I like it the way it is. I think I think the stigma of it or the value of it is because it's so massive. Sure. Sure. It is. You know, it is. Yeah. So massive. This is a lot. I think if you spread it out, you really just hoard it out and it's just it's worthless. Right. <laughs> that very true. But it just, uh, just to kind of just thinking of wrapping my head around, because like I said, the, if we were to come and watch the girls, you know, and then go through all, all matches, I mean, you're there for, I don't know if it's, is it eight days? I don't know exactly what yeah, it is with there, all together. Yeah, if you if you're yeah, it starts on, it starts on a Saturday, ends on a Saturday. Holy shit balls. That's a lot of that's a lot of just straight through, but well, and I'll be honest with you, what they do wrong is they and this is and I'll keep this as nice as possible. Um <laughs> is they throw beach wrestling in there on Thursday and have a complete yes. day off. Yes. That's right. Now that shouldn't be in there. Now they should. I think years ago they had it off to the side somewhere, and you could do it for fun. Yeah, they should do that, but it should have no impact on the scheduling of the tournament. So, do you feel that you don't feel that beach wrestling should have been a part of the tournament at all? As far absolutely as absolutely not, no, not. no, mud wrestling's not. <sighs> Neither is jelly. Mud wrestling. wrestling's not. Mud wrestling's not. Beach wrestling shouldn't be. Um, Turkish Turkish oil wrestling is not. True. Sumo wrestling is not. Yeah. I mean, we could go through the litany of styles of wrestling in the world that yeah. are not part of Fargo. Beach wrestling should be right in there. Right. <laughs> I, beach I, wrestling is beach wrestling. I'm not going to say anything plus or minus about it. Yeah. I'm just saying it shouldn't be a part of Fargo. It's not a part of high school state wrestling, is it? That's folk style tournament. Good point. Valid Why point. Why is it a part of Fargo? There you go. Valid. I'll take it right there for where, what it's worth. What you put, put it at. somewhere else. Yeah. Put it somewhere else. So let's talk about your uh, your Blue River girls. How did uh, how yeah. th- how'd things go? Let's talk about those girls. I I think for like for my girls, my my daughter, I pulled out. We kept her out. We I mean, we probably could have pushed her. I mean, we had Faith wrestle, and Faith probably should not. I mean, Faith should not have wrestled, but she wanted to wrestle, and okay. and, she, and she's a trooper. Um, and we'll talk about her in a second. But yeah. my daughter, we kept out. She had surgery for labrum in like September first or whatever. So okay, I, we just I, I like to have I like to have twelve solid weeks of training, eight solid weeks of training at least before a competition. You yeah. know, of real training. And yeah. We didn't. We would have had maybe two or three weeks, and it just wasn't ready. So I'm not doing that. Um, <laughs> and uh, and we're looking at big picture. We're looking at senior level. So it's, it's, yeah, it's there. You know, there. Yep. So and I well and re re injury. Who wants to have a re injury? You know. Um, <laughs> So, well, and, you know, and, a lot, and I, honestly, a lot of times it's not even the injury. It's just a mental injury. If yeah. like you go out there not prepared and you don't do well or, or you do well, you're like, Oh, I don't, I don't train that hard. Look at look, 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 Good idea. I only train three weeks. Yeah. But you're, I mean, you're, it's, worse. You, it's your daughter though, too. I mean, she knows the big picture. She, you guys have sat down oh, yeah. and said, what do you want to accomplish? You know? So that's where I was going to yeah. ask about like, you know, like a girl like faith, was this something that you were like, she wasn't ready. Was it kind of just mentally to kind of go into something like that? Cause it's a grind. It's not like you, yeah. It's not like you're just kind of you know going out there just kind of we're gonna have four or five matches. I mean, you're, yeah. you're going out, you're going to put yourself on the line like eight, nine different times just to try to, if mm-hmm. you, go, you know, even sometimes on the front sides because these brackets are so fucking big. Oh but, my gosh! What? So what? How was it? Yeah. How was it for your daughter? Like, did was she just like, yep, yeah, good to go, whatever, doesn't matter, we'll take care of this, or was she kind of bummed? Well, see, it's funny because my daughter and my sons, my son has been only raised in Greco and Freestyle. They only, they don't, they don't swim because they don't understand folk style. They, they don't oh. understand. Like they, they don't, they don't, they don't understand. They don't understand the high school season. They're like, well, they don't, they don't understand the like. They just, like in their brain. If you talk to them, like, if they will, folks that are like, I don't understand what's going. I don't get it, you know. And then yeah. they're like, I mean, they get it, but it's like it makes no sense. Like, why can't you? Why can't you do that? Yeah. And then if they're watching high school, it's like, okay, it's high school shit. What's the big deal? I didn't qualify for anything. And so they're they've just been raised in a different culture. Yeah. yeah. You know, they've been overseas for they, You know. Yep. They they trap they dress with more matches overseas. They have in the United States. So for them, it's just like you know, like yeah, okay, Fargo, great. I'll, I'll I got one left. I want to get one in. Yeah. Um, we do want to do the duels hopefully next year. So I mean, she, my daughter's really like she knows and. So with Faith now went in there, um, 
So last year, she had a bunch of training in and then had a late injury okay. on the ankle and had like about eight, six weeks off and then came back and trained for two weeks and went to Fargo and took second. I mean, yeah. had the match won, lost in the last like half second. But this year, I think, well, this year would happen. At, so that last Fargo, she left. Fargo had hip surgery like the next day, like like two days later. Whoa. Labrum hip surgery. So then Jesus. that healed up. And then on September after the holiday, I think right after the holiday, yeah. she had labrum surgery as well, as same as Avery. Um, and she recovered rather quickly. So she was back to wrestling, oh, April. Okay. okay. And um, and it was just pretty, was pretty quick. And um, we had about three weeks of training and of good training. And then she um, didn't break her foot, but she had this injury I'd never heard of. But then she got the injury, Macy Kilty got the injury, and then all of a sudden, like five people I don't have the same injury. I'm like, why well, haven't heard of this injury? You know, I, I just don't pay attention. You know, I just you know, know. you call it the stealth from now on. Yeah. <laughs> and so she had this foot injury in her arch and she was out for eight weeks. And then so I think she and I think, you know, she went she went to Russell Fargo and you know, her I, I mean, I was like, Well, you shouldn't. Yeah. You know. And then, you know, and she's, she's really good. So I'm like, well, you know, you got to talk to your family. It's just, right, she doesn't right. want to pay the bills, you know? And, yeah. and I think, I think it was, you know, I think they were 50, 50 as well. And yeah. I think faith really wanted to wrestle. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm, you know, we'll do, we'll do, we'll see, let's go, let's just go, let's, let's, let's get ready and see what we think and go from there. Yeah. So it came time to set for Fargo. She said for Fargo, we always can pull out and just waste the money. And she wrestled. She took seventh or eighth or something or whatever she took. Okay. Yeah. But, um, but she lost. I mean, she, she got the blood run, won a blood run match. And I think she's like, she probably had, like you just talked, like you just said, she probably had three or four good matches in her. Yep. She didn't have seven or eight matches in her. Ah, uh, you know, yeah. You know, I mean, for training, you know, you just, you works, just don't yeah. have that many in her. It works, yeah. Yeah. And, and see, now she like, she was a cadet last year, only wrestled four minutes. Well, now she's a junior wrestler, six minutes. You go from four minutes to six minutes, that's like an hour. hour yeah. Two minutes in wrestling time is like an hour. It's like, like I always tell people, you watch NBA the last two minutes, at last two minutes at the NBA game. Yeah. It ain't two minutes. Nope. It's like 20. Yeah. <laughs> you know, throw it out of both time. Same thing. And another- yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Well, that's how that's the difference between four minutes and two minutes in wrestling. You yeah, know, yeah. same thing. So yeah, and so I think she did well. I think she I, she did as good as she could have done. Yep. With hours, literally hours of training this year, she had in okay. zero training from Fargo to about April, three weeks of training, and then about a week of training going into Fargo. So I mean, really, really, no, no training is all American. So I was pretty impressed with her just to do that. So. Leo and I were just kind of talking about that as far as like, cause he was, he hadn't been to practice. He left the U S open and his shoulder was kind of hurting. His knee was kind of mm-hmm. hurting. So he took a break. He was just doing some light high school practices, things like that. And he hadn't had like a normal, like a normal practice. And I mean, normal type practice for since the U S mm-hmm. open before Fargo. And he's rolling into Fargo like I'm winning this, I'm winning this, and I'm like, "What the fuck? What?" <laughs> I was like, and I'm, yeah. but I'm, am I going to wreck that? Hell, hell no! You bet, you go yeah. win that, dude. That's right. I'm, yeah. I am right behind you. I'm riding that pony with you. And yeah. then, it, like you said, it works, you man. It after something, something either doesn't go your way, and you're tired. It's like the brain just shuts down. It's like, oh, well, that it, so the and at Fargo, if you lose. You go in the backside, it's like, I think it's like a hundred matches to play. <laughs> it's like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, you can't, you don't, even as a, even as a coach, I don't look at them. So, so even as a coach, it's so depressing. It's like, you know? <laughs> no, so no, depressing. no, no, so that, standing, that, on the, standing on that stand with that bracket where he's still yeah. on the top and still reaches the floor. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so like you said, and then, and then to add insult to injury, is you wrestle like you're like you you could wrestle literally on mat thirty. Yep. And by the time you get done, be mat, be up on mat one because yep. <laughs> the way the tournament is flowing so fast, yeah, you know. That's right. That's right. And you're just like yeah. what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> so that's why Fargo was kind of like it's. That's why it's so good that Fargo's where it's at at the year yeah. at the time of year, and why it means absolutely not. It's not. It doesn't qualify you for anything. No. Nope. Like worlds or the only thing it qualifies. The only thing Fargo does qualify you for is junior world team trials. Oh. So if you play top six, yeah, if you play top six at Fargo, they change the criteria from eight to six. You play top six and at Fargo, you can 
qualify for junior for junior you got you got qualified for junior world team trials yeah so that's one of the qualifications and i want to be nice. like uh some folks though there's some folks have qualifications as well you can use so nice okay but yeah so i mean that's one value of it but uh, but other than that though there's no this it's, it's like it's nice but there's no threats right you know i mean it's the end of the year yeah you know it let, let it, it rip. Let, lay it out there brother. let it rip let that's it rip right. <laughs> yeah so you, you're, you're off when you, the next day comes you're off you're done who, you know who else did you have you so you uh faith faith had uh had a, i mean she's still all american but then um yep. no you had uh hanrahan right hanrahan H- H- eartham H- yep hanrahan eartham yep so how did yep. how did she pan out she, I, she took third uh um, nice i mean we wanted to win i mean we thought we definitely we i mean I hate to say definitely win it, but um, her first year at Fargo, she took third and second. She doubled up. Okay. Um, nice. And she lost to what she lost. Well, she in the in the mat in the back in, in, So last year she didn't wrestle because of torn ACL. And so the first year she went out there, she was up eight nothing in the semis and got pancake and then. Oh sh- And um, oh, sh- yeah. And that girl and the tech, and that, girl, that girl in the technical girl in the finals. Well, the next day Hannah wrestled that same girl in junior in the junior division. And semis and attacked her, you know. So <laughs> Hannah's just like so mad, you know, made that mistake. Yeah. But then she gets in the finals and lost to some girl from Texas. Um, then, um, yeah. So, yeah. So she, you know, so she said a pretty good success. So she's done now. She, you know, she's done with that. She's not eligible to wrestle anymore. So her career stats are pretty good. Yeah. Um, she went. She, she. What happened was she had no criteria for seating because she was off for a year. She, you know, she tore ACL yeah. last yeah. year while team trials in the semis. And um, she's up four nothing in the semis. Matches in control. Gets caught in a scramble. Turns the ACL. You sure, know, sure. And so she's then she then she's out for the year. And so again, like like Faith and Avery, um, uh, she was she didn't start training on the mat until April's. Well, yeah, she was on the mat a little bit like in February, March, like drilling, but not wrestling. You know. Yeah. yeah. I, and, and I would say by the U.S. Open, she was clear. I think um, no, she didn't get actually cleared until like May sometime. But by the U.S. Open, she was wrestling. Okay. She was, so April's yeah. when she first started kind of drilling and working hard. Yeah. By Greco Free, so that's why we used Greco Free South as our first match because we knew, you know, it, we we could go in there and wrestle. Yeah. And be you know and and be in control of the situation and not be worried of re injury and get some mat time in. Um, and then so. We did that. We had a timeline. And then um, with Faith being injured um, and she had a bunch of stuff, she, you know, with high school and stuff, she graduated early. So she had to do some walk through crap for graduation and stuff. Yeah. So she was in. So we, so we did with her. We sent her to the OTC. She had an opportunity to train the OTC. Yeah. So we sent her out there. And then she was probably spent most of summer May, the last couple weeks of May, and then all of June out there. Yep. Coming back and forth with some stuff like that. And then. Um, uh, she came back like a week, like in June 30th or something like that, mm-hmm. right for the holiday. So we had like a seven day holiday break for the guys, you know, yeah. seven, seven family. Yep. And we trained appropriately for that break, came back and then we tapered into Fargo. Now, um, the one thing we just didn't have, we just didn't have a year's worth of training competition going into Fargo, mm-hmm. you know, so Fargo was the real Fargo was the first competition back. I mean, I mean, honestly, if you, if you looked at the, it looked at the, you know, uh, you know, she, she had got high school, you know, she had the Wisconsin high free state tournament, but only three matches, you yeah, know? Yeah, right. Um, and, and so then we go right from just training and, and you could train and wrestle, you know, you, you Liam knows, you know, you know, mm-hmm. you could wrestle a million matches in practice. It's not competition. It's not, it's nope. not a competition. No, it's not a big competition. And so she got the semis against the girl from Illinois, which we knew we had, I'd been watching her for a long time for scouting her for a long time. Yeah. And, um, we knew we had a game plan and all that. And we worked great. Went out there to get the first takedown. Um, got on top. Um, getting at our turn. Stuffed a few takedowns. We knew we knew we were gonna have to defend defend a lot of shots. Mm-hmm. And in the second period, I think we had a little anxiety, a little gas. Um, got a little air, you know, a little tired. Mm-hmm. And we just made some. She made some, you know, some decisions in defense that weren't right. And then gave some takedowns. We lost them at six two. Mm-hmm. And um, and she was really. De- I mean, she was devastated, devastated. Like, I, I mean, devastated, devastated. So I let her go for a long time and do her thing for a long time before I talked to her. But yeah, because, you know, she went to Fargo and this girl, she was wrestling is probably the one girl in the, you know, because he's the number one girl in the country. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, we're, we were trying to prepare for as much as we could with the time we had. Yep. Um, and again, you know, that's probably match like six or five or seven in the tournament. And, you know, you know, and she was checking everybody till then. So it's, 
we didn't wrestle a whole lot of six minute matches anytime during the year. Yeah. Yeah, and that was our first six. That was probably our first six. In fact, that was our first six minute match of the year. So that that's, you know, probably that, for the last couple of years. That's I can know? attest to that. And this isn't to like to be, be like bragging about Liam, but like that's what yeah. happened with him too. There was a lot of places that he went to where the matches they didn't last long. You know, so then yeah. he gets into these matches with these guys that, and I wouldn't even say technical ability, but they're able to kind of either they're good at defense against what he has because they're long or whatever. Well, then he gets worked because mm-hmm. he's got to actually go through the whole match. And then now all the <laughs> shit that was working great ain't working great. Now you're tired, yeah. you know, so I get it. I get it for sure. Well, then you, then anxiety kicks in because of the mental like, fatigue. Like, oh, crap, you know, yep. a little bit of panic. For sure. Because you haven't been in there yet. You haven't been in a situation in a long time. Yep. Give me that opportunity for the injury, and then uh, so anyways, we that happen, and then we, um, for, for, for third place, we had to wrestle a girl, um, that we wrestled in the quarters, and teched her there, and we ended up teching her again in for third place, and uh, okay. and but she and that girl's going to Iowa, you know, oh, and um, okay, then yeah. the girl that wrestled, and the girl that took second, this this girl from other girl from Iowa was going to Iowa. We had uh, beat her previously, you know, so sure. I mean, so I mean, we I had you know, she was Hannah was really you know I mean she had. We obviously you come in there and think I'm gonna you know you you know you can do yeah. this and that and yep. it doesn't happen you know so you gotta go look at the good things of that tournament and the bad things of the tournament um, you know some athletes um, you know some athletes you can get right on it some athletes you got to kind of let them breathe a little bit you sure. know yep um, well so, you know that's I mean that's a coach athlete relationship you know you kind of learn that from those guys and how they yeah. react to certain and things. I'm usually one that learns I usually learn the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> I learned the hard way a few times before I figured it out, you know? Yeah. So, but yeah, overall, uh, but overall, I, if I look at the hours we had in training, uh, you know, I couldn't be happier. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, we drew a train to probably like a couple minutes, went to Fargo. Right. You know, so, um, and, I, and, I, and one thing, you know, uh, we, I, the girls also added, uh, added like rep um technique you know so there was things they did during the tournament i was like okay we've been working on this it's, and, we're, and, we, and we and we did it you know yep. so i'm like good you know okay we're good. We're, we're growing we're growing results you know? yep. so was good so yeah but um but yeah so it was good so what else do any any other girls i thought you had more uh a few more than that as far as girls go mm-hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah. no i have a rule four and that's it four that's <laughs> cut yeah. off cut off so well, now- on, on, and, I'm, and people may get mad at this, but I'm a personal coach. We're not looking to have true, yeah. any extra. Right. I'm not looking to have any extra weight. Um, and we have athletes come and go. Yep. And people like, I, so we're recruiting, a side note, we're recruiting athletes. And we're doing, I'm doing Zoom calls with parents from all over the country. And yeah. mostly it's for boys. And right. they're like, well, what's your retention rate? I mean, what do you mean retention rate? <laughs> like, well, how many come to the club and leave? I go, like, I says almost 100% kids leave. Like what? I'm like, well, yeah, like most people don't, don't make stay it. Here? <laughs> they here? They don't, they just don't, either they hate me or they can't do this or whatever. They don't like me or I, li- I don't like them or, right. or they come in and are like, okay, I don't want to do this. I mean, there's a lot of, there's, there's, there's a lot of good reasons not to train a combat. There's a lot of good ones, you know? And, uh, and so to be here takes a different type of person. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, it's, okay. So, I mean, we obviously we've always heard you talking about how how specialized and you know that these things are in the level that that kids are wrestling at now, like especially even overseas. And obviously, we know how they train. We've talked about this before. But in order mm-hmm. to keep up with it, you have to dedicate to it. In order to be good at it, you have to dedicate to it. And it, it, we're not we're not built the same in this country, just the way that we have chosen to do things. So we're not built mm-hmm. that way. We're not, we aren't, we aren't wired that way within this large community within the United States. So when, when it comes down to how people perceive what you have and in, in what you've built, I think a lot of them don't, they, they don't know. So I don't think a lot of them do the research. There isn't, there's this that we talk about, you know, like we have this, the podcast, but a lot of people mm-hmm. don't, aren't able to go to like because you do your social media, but not all mm-hmm. of them are out there watching social media. So it's like they don't yeah. they don't get the full scope of what you guys are doing because if they watch just some of the clips that you guys are doing, it's way more in depth than most people would even see at a um uh let's say like even Nazar 
right? So it's he he knows he knows his technique, and I've always told people like I think Nazar would be great to go to learn some freestyle because he knows yep. some of the he knows some of the stuff that's you know from overseas. He has those yep. little tricks, but you don't. Nobody else has the Greco and the knowledge that that you do. Like you've been working with Linlin and all these guys that are world renowned. So the track that you have guys on, even like with the boys, you know, because we're going to start talking yep. about those guys. When you talk yep. about the Greco and, and the in-depth Greco that you guys go into, you can see the difference in the training between, the, I was talking to someone about this, when you have a high-level guy who's, who's a high-level Greco athlete, this is what he does, and he goes against a guy who's been practicing Greco for, oh, let's say four weeks or five weeks before he wrestles against this guy. It's harder mm-hmm. for that guy who's good at Greco to do well against a guy who's not good at it, you know? <laughs> right. Well, yes. So that's you ever been no you ever you ever been to high school dual meet where you have like five time <laughs> million time state champion never been beat and they got some got some dude from some school that just the rank. for the fences <laughs> yeah right yeah the guy is the guy that's never the, 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 the guy that shouldn't even weigh in the wrestlers dude looks amazing because he's right wrestling an amazing guy and the guy that's amazing looks like crap he's wrestling guy that's crap right <laughs> he's wrestling remember down. That, you just I always, you have to remember this this is like true. All through everything in the world, yep. that bad parts make good parts bad. Yes. Good parts don't make bad parts good. <laughs> and so, yeah. Very so what true. you're saying happens all the time. Yep. So it's it's, it's the when they're asking those types of questions again. There probably isn't a lot. They heard something from someone, and yep. they saw a video of a kid wrestling that's from your club, and they thought he looked really good. So now they called and they had questions. They want to. We saw this and we talked to so and so, so we have some questions. And then the questions that yep. they're asking seem like they should have been answered at some point. I would think we're like, you guys didn't know this kind of thing, or yeah. Well, here's what happens is uh, so, so when people call about that, but they're like, okay, what's the deal? What's the call? You know, they want obviously money. I mean, that's right. That's part of life, right? Obviously, yep. and honestly, we're pretty cheap. If you divide out what we charge, it's not bad. And, uh, we're training, and we're training full time, every day, twice a day, three times a day. It's pennies, right? Pennies, bro. Yep. I mean, it's it, it, if it was gymnastics, um, I'd be charging about three times as much. Okay, at least. Okay, you know, I mean, I about that later on. So you right. know, at least, and so I mean, I make it as cost effective as possible. I make sure we're losing money every year because we're. I mean, we're sticking money back in the club, you know, or, or right. overseas, you know. Correct. Correct. Yes. I mean, yep. we have extra money we're spending on, on the club, you know. On the club. I should say. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, okay, so, um, so that's one, and then so sometimes money is a factor, but not many times. Yep. Most of the time, why people don't make it, it's not even the wrestling record full time. Blah 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 blah. The ninety nine percent of guys don't commit, or girls don't commit when they can't adhere to the requirements of what they can and cannot do. Right. Correct. When I say to them, you have to be here five, seven days a week. You have to be here. You know all this stuff. Mm-hmm. You can't wrestle in high school. You can't just can't do that. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, but I just want to do one more year. Okay, do your one more year and come back here. Mm-hmm. If they come to me and, uh, like I said, say, let's say they're going to, right now we have some guys moving in, they're going to be seniors. They're going to forego the senior year from our states. But I brought them in last year yep. to try them out to see how they fit with the guys and see, make sure we're all going to get along. Yep. And then I, I evaluated them. I'm like, okay, well, they they can help us and we can help them. We'll bring them in. But there was an athlete, like we've had an athlete since last year that we brought him in. I gave him like six months to try it out. Yep. They were there for six months. And I said, here's the deal. You were for six months. And it's just, it, it's not, you cannot, you, we're helping you, but you're not helping us. Sure. And yep. so you're going to have to go separate ways. And the problem we're having is the other athletes you're going to be training with, we need to get to the world level. We need to make a world team with a middle medal. Yep. And you, you're not going to be able to help us do that. Correct. Now, you need to go back somewhere else and train and get better and come back because my clientele is like, yeah, I'm not trained with that person because I'm not here to help them. They're, they're, we're here to help each other, but they're not helping me in any aspect whatsoever. So, and that's, just, and that's the reality. It's, 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 is it, is it, whole, is it mean? I don't know if it's mean to be truthful. It's honest. I mean, it's, 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 it's truth is facts it's and it's honest. not mean. I'm not telling him, I'm not calling him a dirty name. Nope. It's just, that's the way our, our place is. You have to come here with some, a, some form of adding to us so we can add to you. You can't come in here with nothing and we have to start from ground zero and you're going to negatively you, affect our athletes. Well, you're, you know? you're, you're setting what I like to call a standard. You know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having yeah. a standard, especially when you have athletes that are kind of depending on a standard. 
You know, you, you have other well, athletes that have those move- goals that, ha- that are relying on a standard. So people ain't moving to Blue River, Wisconsin with four and three people living a shithole wrestle in a old school and get yelled at by me every single day and go through the crap, <laughs> travel around the world, living on pennies. Yeah. Well, that's the way it should not be Not to get right? better. Cause not to get better. You are truly getting them yeah. ready for Colorado Springs. Well, that's in our story, but yeah, I mean, in essence, yeah. But um, uh, that we talk, we'll talk about that later. Yep. But so no, boys. but you go back and what, so the, and the reason why people don't make it is because of what I just said. They 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 perceive Greco to be something they learned at like Greco Fargo camp or or their twice or their practice was that's half Greco or half you know, like Russell Greco yeah. in the springtime, and they come to our practice, and they can't do the warm up. Right. Right. I mean, you can't do just that. Would be, that would be like imagine this. That'd be like you being like, I want to wrestle in Division One college. You walk in the room and you you came and do stance motions. And they're like, Yeah, we're not here to help. We're not here. Yeah. Division One coaches aren't keeping stance motion. Nope. They're not. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were gonna probably whatever. But there, there's a lot of things they're not teaching, right? Like teaching because finishing. you're supposed to have these things acquired. That's where we're at. Yeah. Like we if we see an athlete that's an amazing athlete, and we can we can quickly instill these skills. Sure. We will we'll do that. Yeah. But if we come, but if a kid comes in. And and I'll be honest, we're going to talk about the girls in a second. Bro, I am beside myself 100, 100% of the athletes, boys and girls come to the club. They came and do basic skills, bro. It's <laughs> pathetic. They learn how to win matches and do some moves. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, I understand that. But now we have to then want to say, okay, we have to spend a whole six, eight months at least to learn the warm. Because the warm up has drills and skills, not just running around doing some stupid technique, right. you know. Because you got to be able to warm everybody else up and not break somebody in half or get hurt yourself, right? You know, they're like, "Oh, really?" I'm like, yeah, we're not even going to teach you how to wrestle for six months. You can't even do the damn warm up, you know? <laughs> right? Yep. You can't yep. even do half the skills of the seven basic skills, man. So- <laughs> you know, especially the girls. So- and so when I sit there and say that to them, and I'm like, and they're like, and they're like, "Oh, why well, thousand come here? We're going to gut wrenches and." This and I'm like, hey, yeah, we're gonna do a hundred Polish finishes tonight. And they're like, what's a Polish finish? I'm like, Amman, go show them a Polish finish. And they never seen before. I'm like, okay, well, you, we'll, we'll teach you that. Yeah. But they don't even have the ability to do the lift and do certain things. They're like, okay, well, you have to go back now, and you have to acquire the ability to do certain things. Then we'll teach you how to do skills. Right. See, and that's where people get really, really mad. Like, well, you're supposed to coach them. Would you just would you expect a Division One coach to teach a kid? how to spell wrestling and tie your shoes right. and folks that don't peel a half Nelson. No, no, you need to go back to some club and learn that crap. Yeah. You yep. know, yep. or come, or come to our camps. And that's what usually happens. Come to the camps. Yep. Yep. And that's kind of what we do. Those during those camps is learn those skills, like back step, all the different types of back steps, the by lock stuff, the blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And that's what camp, that's what HPG really is, is learning ba- all the basic skills like Greco, teaching them to move. Yep. Yep. Cause them, those are just good athletic, good athletic stuff to learn. Yeah. And you like, like, like a back step, you know, it's like, when we teach back step, I teach with hands, I single, if you can do a hands, I single, you do it. You can do a back step. So I can't like, I'm like, you're already doing this, but your brain is stuck in this other mode. So we got to teach them all this stuff. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of ways to teach all that stuff, but that, so that's, so that's how typically what happens. Okay. You need to come back and join HPG for a year or two, then maybe come back and try this, you yeah. know, or honestly, what's going on right now, other Greco Roman wrestling clubs. Yeah. Are, are sending guys to us. They're getting those guys because they're, they're they're a freestyle folk style Greco club, sure. right? Doing like yep. part Greco, and they're getting those guys to a certain point. So like, okay, we're maxed out here. We don't have any partners. You want to go full time? You got to go to Lucas or the or, 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 or a guy like Lucas. Yeah, yeah. But that's how I'm getting guys now. I'm getting. I'm actually getting more. I'm getting more athletes from other clubs. So speaking of guys, speaking over. of guys, let's get to the guys at Fargo. Yeah. So you had you yeah. had a handful there, correct? Yeah, we had a handful. Yeah. Ashton, and then you had uh, 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 Hamer, right? Well, for Wisconsin, yeah, we had, I think what would we have for Wisconsin? I had a cadet, um, Brody Meese, would be Ashton Meese's little brother. Yep. Um, that's it. And then, um, and we had some HBG guys, but they're from other clubs. So I can claim those guys. Sure. Yeah. And then, um, and then we had in juniors, we had uh, Nutter, and then we had yes. Ashton. Ashton. So we had three guys from Wisconsin. Oh, okay. All right. I, I don't know. Hamer's graduated, isn't he? Who? Hey, Corey Hamer? Or Gunner, uh, no, Gunner, 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 Gun
He just he just looks thirty. He just looks thirty. Yeah. So I was like, I kind of th- I don't think he graduated yet, did he? But uh, yeah, hey, yeah, he should have graduated. Well, he gra- he graduated like this year, but I mean, you look at him, looks like he's thirty years old. <laughs> right, 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 right. So I mean, I, so Ashton Ashton won it, right? Mises a champion. Ashton won it. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yep. So that that was good. What um what kind yep. of results did you guys see out of out of your guys down there? Well, I thought Brody a little the cadet did nice. He won two he went two and all right away. He went two and two overall. Yeah, beat out. But okay. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a quick little this is a ten second story. Yeah. So he goes two and two. The next two matches, I about went to prison over him. Uh so I went and got yellow carded. Oh, and I went on the mat and I proceeded to tell the referee, I says, I'm getting this yellow card taken away. And and now I'm gonna go talk to the head referee. Yeah. So and I said it. I said it a little differently than that, but that's what I said. Yeah. And right, so, right. yeah. <laughs> and so I went after the after the match. The next, the very next Wisconsin match, she did the exact same thing to this kid. Put him down twice, all this stuff. And then I went and talked to the head referee. And um, I'm not sure this is gonna be yellow card away, but they pulled her off the mat the next day. She just was not doing a good. The lady, the the, the referee was doing a horrible job. And it wasn't me. It was like a lot of. There's a lot of people complaining about it. Right. So then the next right. match he has. He he's getting he just got railroaded. He's at the two and one. He's pushing the guy in his own, and they're putting him down twice. I'm like, we're the ones winning everything. I noticed that. And yeah, yep. They're just they're extreme. There's the Dalyard Fargo. Yep. Dalyard Fargo, and you're losing matches because referees are complete. One hundred percent. One hundred percent because the referee. And, and this is how bad it is. Referees are coming to coaches like me and saying, "Hey, let us know how you're doing." When the good referees and the good coaches go get together, we get along. Yeah. And when they're like, "Yeah, we're having problems," and it's usually the referees from down south that don't, don't do like rack they just won't learn, won't get educated, sure. you know, won't, listen, won't listen to criticism or even from other referees. Wow. You know. So yeah. So I mean, he he probably you you know out of those two matches, he should win at least one of them, uh, maybe both of them. He I mean totally got railroaded. But I mean, so he's a freshman, went two and two. I'm happy for him. Right. Um, and so. Next guy up is um, Gunner, uh, uh, weight wise, is uh, Emma Nutter. He took seven. Yep. Last yep. week, uh, first year, I'm not, I think first year he didn't play. Uh, I'm not sure if he placed the first year or not. Then he took second last year in cadets. Yep. This is the first year junior. He took seven. And this is like, this is a, uh, and then uh, this is this good, this is a good story. So I said to Emma, I says, hey, here's the deal. If you go down to 20 or 26, you walk the tournament, you walk it. Mm-hmm. You're walking through this thing. And you're you're highlight real boy. Yeah, you stay at thirty two. You're gonna you'll you'll all American. You're gonna all American. Do you win it? I hope so. Yep. But you're about 10, 12 pounds too small. Okay. You know, for Fargo. Yep. Yep. You know, yep. the day before lands. It's just, it's, 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 and we could talk about how the guys are cutting weight and all that stuff, but this is the reality of the world. The reality on the street is he's 10, 12 pounds too small, and so and that's gonna wear on you mm-hmm. after six, seven matches. And he got that he was up seven one in quarters. And lost a match seven seven or whatever. I don't know. These guys just wore on him. That was big. And then um I think he lost again. Whatever I mean, he lost whatever again and took took seventh. Yeah. Um he just didn't have the mass, you know. Yeah. Um and well, so as much as but, we but he comes to me, he but this is what I told him. So, yeah. so I go, what we can do. He goes, uh, I'm gonna stay at, I'm gonna stay at thirty two. Uh, I want to grow. I want to grow into sixty kilos for next year for junior for junior college. Hey, but hey, hundred percent. Right. It's, it's gonna be the same page. Yeah. I'm gonna weigh in. Yeah. Hey, bro, I don't care if you, I don't care if you get beat out. Right. I mean, this is why I don't care about Fargo. Fargo is something we do like the end of the year pizza party. Sure. I mean, and people don't do it. And people get mad like, oh, like, oh we're training for it. We want to do good. We're gonna, we win over Ashton Wong. We're going to brag about it. Right. And if they don't play, I'm like, hey, <laughs> you guys have to understand. We are preparing for something at a much greater scale. Right. This is just the wayside, brother. Yeah. 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 Seriously. We're, you know, we're stopping to take a piss, man. We're not, I mean, we're, we're not peeking up for this stupid thing. Yeah, next And time. so the refereeing is, refereeing is horrible. The wrestling, wrestling is horrible. It's just, and, you know, it's just a bad evaluation of a Greco-Roman wrestler. Yeah. Now, you can win it. You know, and we always say in Greco, you want to win Fargo? But you, and I'll tell you right now, you, you, want to, you want to win Fargo? You know what you do? What? What do you do? You do nothing. nothing. You do nothing. <laughs> the referee will screw their kid, put, put him down, you got him out. Or yeah. you just, the guy will make a mistake, catch him. It's not, and that's what you see, guys doing nothing, waiting for someone to make a mistake. Yeah. And the guys that wrestle try to score points sometimes, you know, are trying to score too much. Because they're guys, you know, if you're, if you're, we always, in Greco, we try to tell the guys, in, in my guys that are folk style, Greco guys, Greco folk style guys that do wrestle in high school, I tell them, guys, you can't 
go to Greco and folk style. Because if if you only can throw somebody yeah. that wants to throw you, right, 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 and you only can attack somebody's legs that wants to attack your legs, it's just the way the the way the action takes place. Yep. And so, uh, so you know, so some that that takes place, you know. So that's why with him going to the same to like, bro, if we all American win, we win. So then after I have Gunnar Hamre, you know, he's he's taken he's taken third or every single year so far out there. And this he got beat out. He, this is one. This is one of my star pupils. Yeah. Full time Greco. Yep. He's, you know, takes third at the U.S. Open the last two years. Yep. I mean, this guy's winning. This guy's placing at major tournaments in, in the country, in the world. And he just beat out of Fargo, a little piss in high school tournament, you know. <laughs> so first round, he pulls a Ukrainian refugee kid. Yeah. That's full time, you know, from group Kane, full time, real, you know, real wrestler. Yeah. And goes to, goes, goes up with Bylocks and. The rule in bylaws is go first. Well, he, he waited a little too long, got thrown first, and got it out. You know, so yeah, he didn't. He didn't go first. Yeah, and then he went. He wrestled like I don't know, like you say, you wouldn't have. It was the first match of the tournament. Oh, second shit. seat. So then you got you know you got a years with the matches left. Ooh. So he gets he gets been to wrestle backs, and then he goes double unders a guy and got ripped the headlock on him. And it's just like, oh. dude, you know he just, he didn't. He, what happened there? He got a little arrogant or a little like, well, these guys in the rest of all suck. I'm tech. He was tech everybody like in 30 seconds. Right, right. Ripping through the tournament. And I just, he got a little arrogant, a little lazy and got headlocked, you know? Yeah. And then, um, yeah. And then, so then we had, then we had, um, Mies. Yep. And, um, he's, that's a good, that's like, that's like, that's the one of them good, almost, almost like a Marisol story. You know, we, we did, he was so bad his freshman year, eighth grade freshman year, we didn't take him to Fargo. Like, no, you're not going. You it'll 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 really depress you, buddy. You're not yeah, going. Yeah, right. No. So then the second year, then the, then the first year he goes as, uh, as a cadet, uh, second year cadet. He goes and takes seventh or takes seventh, yep. which I thought was amazing. Yep. And then last year he, he we're thinking, okay, he's gonna make finals. He's gonna, you know, he's looking good. He yep. went over, you know, he's looking real good internationally and domestically. Gets beat out. Gets beat out. And then this year we made some adjustments. We didn't do we didn't do the duels this year. Yep. We did different. We did different schedule with them. Um, we changed the training schedule. We did some different things. Mm-hmm. And um, and he he walked it. I mean, he didn't, yeah. I didn't say walk it. He gave up two points because he stepped out and got cautioned. And I reamed him after that match because yeah. you 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 got it. You can't because it was kind of like a fumble. It was kind of he gave it. He didn't have to give it up. He should. I said you don't want this guy getting confidence. Blah blah blah. So, and that was, I forget, that semis or something. Yeah. And then, um, but he was playing it safe. I mean, I, I know what he's doing. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I got plenty of points to give up here. Right. I'm not going to scramble, get forward. And yeah. And I'm thinking, I, mean, I got a little, maybe, maybe, maybe I get a little zealous stuff. But, you know, I'm, that's how I coach them. Like, there, if there's a crack, I'm sealing it up right away. Right. And um, then the finals, he, he wrestled like he, he just wrestled amazing. He wrestled perfect. He just wrestled like he's been training. And I, I posted, like, you know, what he did was really simple. What he did is every single day he did the right thing every single day, off the mat, on the mat. That's what he did. Yeah, you know, yeah. and it well, showed, and it, it showed. showed. It, you know, and here, here we, here we go to a quick story on him. We go to, we go to junior world team trials. Yeah, he's not qualified for junior world team trials because he didn't place at Vegas and he didn't place at Fargo. You know, last year. Yeah. So we go there like you can't wrestle. You can't. We go, we go all the way there. He can't wrestle. I'm like, what well, can I put him in the U23 bracket? They're like, yeah, he can go U23. He's like, he looks, he looks at me like U23, he's a college guy. I'm like, Ashton, you'll be fine. He takes third. <laughs> Holy shit. So he shit. goes up to the against the college guy, he takes third, he just destroys them. So <laughs> so so him not so him not placing at Fargo or the US Open, forcing to wrestle the U23 was the best thing. Yeah. That ever happened? I hope because now he's like, dude, I just wrestled these men, yeah, you know, twenty-two year old men from yeah, college and yeah. destroyed them, you know, <laughs> and um, and you know, and I thought he almost, and he he made one mistake on a guy, got by like a pin, and a big strong dude, and he yeah. he, he got a little too again arrogant. Wow. He probably could have been boring and won that match and made the team, and so that so so that whole process of losing. Was the best thing ever happened to yeah. him, and now he's doing great, you know. Yep. Um. So when we always say trade, you know, trade your wins for trade your losses for wins, you know, that's what he's exactly what he did. Yep. So good. So yeah. we're transitioning a little bit here into what yeah. you wanted to kind of get into at the at the, I, I guess not necessarily the end, but kind of yeah. what, what you, this is all leading into. So what what is it that you were you wanted to kind of touch on? Oh, okay. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, I'll, I'll run through that women's freestyle thing quick. 
you know, so you, you, you have a situation right now, women's freestyle, especially in Wisconsin. I think um, if you look at the best women in the world, yep. United States in the world, ones in the United States and one in the world, they all start in Greco. They all have a Greco background. They all have Greco Roman coaches, Greco Roman background, oh. Greco Roman hand fighting, women, Greco Roman skills, women, women. Okay. So you know, you look at like you look at Hel Morales, look at Ellen Gray, you look like Amit Elor. Yeah, all trained with Greco Roman background. Like okay. coaches with Greco Roman, they're doing two and ones. They're doing a lot of Greco type stuff. And Greg, Helen yep. and Amit by training. Yep, yep. Yep. Helen and Amit. Helen and Amit were trained. Um, uh, by this uh, Gavika Valentine. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I can't say his name. Yeah. Uh, I, can't, I can't say his name correctly. Valentine. He Kalika. never wrestled freestyle in his life. Yeah. He's a Greco Roman wrestler from USSR, wrestled like 40, not 10 or 50 kilos or something back in the day. Yeah. Like, what a 114 where it was. was National champion or world European champion or something. <laughs> he came to the United States. Don't be wanting to do Greco. So he started, he started coaching Arab people in freestyle. Be talking about, but he did all Greco with them snap downs, go behind, sure. drags, all that stuff. Yeah. Aaron, built Aaron Pico. Aaron Pico goes to MMA, picks up El Morales. El Morales wins their first gold medal in the Olympics. Yep. Picks up picks up a meet Elor. Best thing in the world right now. Yeah. Best wrestler in the history of the United States. <laughs> Greco Roman. Yeah. You know? And now we have a situation in the United States where they're gonna do this folk style thing, and you're gonna see you're gonna see the women go back, you know, you're gonna see regression. A lot, a lot of wrestlers. But the value that the but the but but the like the the like I say about the wrestlers, like their ability to be internationally successful, they'll probably still win, but their skill level is going to go down. Like sure. right now, if you watch, right now, if you watch the girls wrestle at the highest level, the girls that are trained with Greco Roman background or skills or hand fighting skills and all that kind of stuff, feet to back, they're scoring fours and fives and yes. twos and, and getting on top and turning people and, you know, scoring off bottom and they're scoring in all positions and they're dangerous. Watch Hell Mor- Watch the Hell Morales and Ellen Great Tape. They're putting people on their back and their feet all over the place. Mm-hmm. Now, you look at um, Kennedy Blaze, trained by Izzy, Greco Roman, big they bring Greco Roman stuff. Yeah. They're, you know, they're they're that type of stuff, putting people on their back. So they might not be like doing Greco Roman, Greco Roman, but they're Greco Roman type actions and hand fighting and all that stuff. Sure. And yep. a lot of them are trained by Greco Roman coaches. Yep. And internationally as well. And it goes first. It should go gymnastics, Greco Roman, and freestyle in that order. You're not going to go. Heel leaders don't make gymnastics. Gymnasts turn into cheerleaders. Turn into cheerleaders. That's the yeah. other way around. So, and that's just people get mad about this. It's factual. And so, with a little bit of gymnastics, a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So, when I watch the girls right now, and like when I honestly, I mean, in our club, our girls train Greco, obviously, and they do all the Greco warm up stuff. Because when we go overseas and we're doing a warm up, I want our girls to be able to do the warm up speed throws, by locks, you know, cartwheel out of headlocks and arm throws. Not a single, not a single girl from Wisconsin can do those things. Right. Not a single girl. Right. And when they come to the club, and I do invite some girls into train because I, I think they're really they've got great families and they got good people and yeah. and they can help us and try to help them. Um, we, we 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 try to help them, you know, learn these skills and stuff like that. But it's frustrating because you know, I mean, it's just like we could do better. We could do so much better. So you're with talking the, about so bit, with, with the girls being mixed in with the folk style season and things like that. And, and, and well, that, and just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause they're, they're, what problem with the folk style season, what they're worried about, they're worried about winning matches. Yeah. They're not worried about learning to wrestle. Right. They're worried about winning matches now. And we, and I'm going to, so right now I watch on a grand scale, like these girls are learning like the boys, the win matches boys come in. They can't do anything. They're so, they learn double legs, hand side singles. They learn stance motion. They might learn a headlock. It's crappy, but they can't do a back arch, back step. Yeah. They can't do anything that's, that's past the rudimentary skills of wrestling. Right. And then, then you, and then you get the girls. They're in the same boat now. <laughs> but when the girls didn't have high school wrestling, like Macy Kilty and Kelly Welker, yep. Kelly Welker wrestled tons of Greco. Yeah. Like she was a youth. Um, Macy uses uh, uses a lot of two on ones and stuff like that. Yep. I just. We wouldn't play top golf with her. Yep. And, you know, it's like, you know, so it's, 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 uh, with the, the, that's why I'm so anti high school. Now, if you're a girl, I'll jump in here. I'm not, I'm not, I just, we have to have high school wrestling and it can be folk though. And Rima, just make sure everybody knows this. If high school wrestling was freestyle and Greco, yep. I still would never promote it. I still wouldn't be a part of it. It's my, my thing with high school, with high school is goes far beyond sport. Sure. It goes more about the cultural aspect of the, the community of it and all this stuff like that. 
So, okay. it, so the, the style of wrestling is in there, you know, there. But with the fact that they're, if you're a, if you're a girl or a boy and you want to play football and baseball and basketball and soccer, yeah, go wrestle, go wrestle in high school. Yeah. And we make all the guys. We have one guy right now. It's living here from another state. His mom's a college professor and dad's an engineer. And they're like, guys, don't wrestle in high school. We made him wrestle one year in high school. He like moved away from November to March, came back as a going back stand because he couldn't stand it. Like, so I want him to at least try it to make sure, yep. you know, yep. that make so, an informed know. decision. Yeah. Oh, totally. hundred yep. percent. That's way, that's way, I'd rather have him at 14, but I say 16. Like you said, it's America. Yeah. It's yeah. reality. It's America. Yep. I got to make sure these kids aren't saying, oh, I wish I at least tried it one time, you know? So we got it. We got to go through that process. Yep. So, you know, um, you know, some, we have to have it, but don't think this. So the high school wrestling is a choice. It's not a system. College wrestling is a choice. It's not a part of the system. If True. it was a system, if it was a system, then there wouldn't be all the oversight. Coaches can't coach in the off season. Coaches can't coach you to turn of it. You can't treat your piece of Greco. <laughs> yeah. You can't be here more than two hours a day. Blah, 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 blah. Yep. It's not. It's for parity. It's for an after school Hallmark experience. That's all it is. It was never meant to be a training device to make the Olympics. Holy shit. Then we freestyle then at least. <sighs> so that's why I'm like, just take that wrestling and make sure you understand what you're getting yourself into. That's yeah. why I will not work with any girls or well, we do bring a couple girls that do a little hash wrestling, <laughs> but I won't bring one in, like put my time and like name on her. Right. And I say, okay, you're saying here, if you're going to high school. Now we had a girl come to this last year, like you have to go. I said, you have to go back to high school. So you just you do your level and yeah. your ability. It's high right. school. You need to wrestle high school. And that's and why so we're not pulling people. We're we're trying to find the right people and put them in the right system. That's why I like the saying: of "Don't half-ass anything, whole-ass everything." Oh yeah, yeah. Whole is that an, is that Anchorman? It's, I is think so. Anchorman? I'm pretty sure it's one of those guys. I heard it somewhere. Yeah, I, it I, I believe in it totally. <laughs> I think it's Anchorman. Whole-ass everything. So everything. It's true. It's true. Yeah. So so that's that. And so like, run through that quick, you know. So that it, I'm really kind of like. You know, and I said this, and I'm going to say it out loud here on this. When they sanctioned high school wrestling in Wisconsin. Yep, for girls. Yep. The eras of Macy Kilty and Kelly Wilkers ended. Yeah. Unless yeah. they follow pe- my people like what we're doing. Your path. And it is no secret that when Alston left, then Macy left, then Welker left, then Benji left. And then Peyton Jacobson left, and Cal Cauley left, and now we have all these guys doing it, and all these girls doing it. And then my girls left. And, and, uh, we had a situation, you know, it, what, you know, we have had athletes, so I'm going to go back to high school. Well, then we can't be here no more, blah, blah, blah. You know, so, um, if we, cause we know, we know where it's going to end up. We know it's going to end up. There's a hole in your theory though, Lucas, you want all these people to do this, but you're only letting four girls in at a time. What the fuck's wrong with that? No, I don't want, no, I don't want anybody. <laughs> I, only, uh, I only want <laughs> the ones that have the, the potential ability. Yeah. So like in gymnastics, when I go back to gymnastics, they'll come together. I'm not, I'm talking like you, that's what I'm saying. I want at least all my, go, all my boys to wrestle at least one year of high school. Yeah. All of them. At least one year. Sure. At least in the mo- most, the max two. That's 16. fair. Depends what your birth, your birth year is kind of, you know what I mean? It's fair. It's but, fair. I get it. Yeah. Right. And you, you know, and you know, because they, they, they're in that mold, I'm like, sure, you know, because yeah. you can't, I can't it's, in, yeah, yeah, if it was the United States, don't have to worry about it, but it's the United States. We have to, we have to use some, we have to use, we have to, we have to fix the, we have to kind of tweak it a little bit, the right. the the, the, the uh, top down theory. So what that said is, no, the girls should all try. Oh, my girls had it to two years of high school. Faith did no high school. My daughter did no high school. Yep. But like the deal is, is like they should all, you know. I don't. I mean, I think like my daughter would never do high school. So I just don't believe in. I it's, 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 like I said, it's far beyond the sport itself. It's well, this it's like. I just don't believe in that system of stuff. Sure. You know, I just don't believe in that socialization and all that other crap. Right. So it's far beyond the sport. Right. So, I mean, that's where people understand it's, it's, it's a lot more than just the sport itself. So what that said is like, you know, hand it two years and we're like, here, what do you want to do? And if she just said back to high school, I'm like, bye. I know where you're going. I know what's going to happen. <laughs> you'll be, you'll, it's going to stunt your growth. It's going to stunt your growth. Yeah. And because you're going to be, you're going to be tested like the boys, like the boys are going to be tested in a very small pool of athletes. Sure. Yep. Yep. A tiny, and then, and then, then you're going to get an A plus. On the test, and you're gonna be like, "Oh, I'm, I'm the same as an athlete from over here." No, no, you're not the same as an athlete that won this over here. Yeah, it's a, yeah, you know. So, <laughs> so that's where I think there's a big problem. So now those girls that do do high school wrestling almost forced to go to college because they're so far behind. Right, right. You know, and now they're going to college. So, what do high school coaches care about? 
They care about team state titles and conference and team unity and growing kids up and all that stuff, yeah. which is great. Yep. Which is great. Yep. I but agree. they're not focused on winning Olympic. But they're not focused on winning Olympic title and making world teams and peaking and peaking and peaking in uh, well April for the girls not that many more. Yeah. In um, May and it depends where your you know where your world team is, what time of year it is. Yep. They're not focused on that. They're focused on peaking in February. Right. You know. Right. So they're not. They're not, and then and then you can't even train them. You can't even legally train the guys for that time of the year. So 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 that's what I'm saying. You know. A lot so, of traps. So, you know. There's two, yeah. And so then you get the college people. And this is verbatim. You walk into a college, you're like, hey, I'm going to, I, I talk to these girls, the seniors all the time. And I'm like, hey, what about, blah, blah, blah. and they're like, oh, I went in there and I talked to them. I said, well, I'm going to do, you know, international, I travel internationally and train and I'm going to do these tournaments and I'm going to do world team trials. And we're like, oh, yeah, you can do that after you win the NCAA title. Like, literally. Uh, well, you know, we'll see, you know, we'll see how we'll do that. Uh, we're looking into that. No, yeah. they're not looking into it. That's like a Division One guy and saying we're going to support Greco. Come on. <laughs> they, they'll support Greco as much as it interferes with their folk style. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, And so that's who the yeah, – so, so, <laughs> but the rules in the environment of college isn't – it's meant to be good in college. It's, it's not meant to – it's not designed right. like that. Yeah, they're, they're not long-term. They're not long-term. No, yeah. no. It's a difference. You know, their brains and the college coaches aren't thinking like that. They don't want to think like that. They're getting paid six figures to win NCAA titles. Prime, prime, make a prime example, real quick. Prime example. So now you yeah. see a lot of these kids with this NIL stuff. They These kids, yeah. they redshirt. They go for to college for, what, five years, right? The colleges are yeah. starting to see it while they're on their senior year. Wow, we don't know if we have that. We got so-and-so coming in, so we don't know if we're going to be able to have that for your fifth year. So it's like they're not concerned about the long-term. Not all. Oh, I mean, there might be a couple that are like special, whatever no, it is. But. None, zero. Okay, if there's one or two, it's zero still. Right. <laughs> it's still zero percent, so minute. Yeah. But it's just, you notice it. You notice that the schools aren't, they, the, even the RTC, if you were the RTC, wouldn't you be like, hold on, where, why are you throwing this guy? No, 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 no. We need that here. You know, you think you'd want to keep something like that around if you're really thinking of the long term. But that's got to be a personal goal now. You know, that's. Yes, yeah. yes. And there's not so much trying to tire. Yep. So then you go to college and you get out of college at like 24, 22. Yep. And you're like, so yeah, you did all 22. this high school and all this college. Yeah. And you're like, okay, now, now you can go chase your dream. Yes. Yeah. You have two days, you have two days left. You have two days left of being an athlete. <laughs> so <laughs> you're in your waning years of being an athlete. It's the worst possible time of your life to, to change, you know, skill sets or yeah. well, at least women's freestyles in college. Yep. And because, and you're like, Oh, Helen wanted it. Helen wanted it, blah, blah, blah. Then you say something Greg will do. Yeah, okay, at 28. Good. Okay, awesome. Unfortunately, she beat a girl that already won three of them. Yeah. At 18, 24, and 26, or whatever the way, age brackets were, 28, yeah. or she was 32, whatever. The goal needs to be to be the best in the world. The best in the world is Japan. They're winning gold medals yep. with juniors at Love Bank. <laughs> and the only girls in the United States that equal to Japan girls are the girls that wrestle zero high school or almost no high school yep. and aren't doing college yep. because first of all, they have to hyper-focus on the skills and the tasks yep. and the speed of the game. You can't go from JD football in division, whatever we are in Riverdale here, or whatever it's got, yeah. to division one varsity football on next week. Just, you're, you're all playing the same game, but totally different skill set, right. speed of the game, blah, right. blah, blah, complication. It's not the same. College football is up NFL football. College football isn't one, two, three football. Yeah, you know, you know, high school, same thing. It's it's not the same. And then then you're like, you know, you go scientific. You go with the girl. Now we're talking about the girl thing is kind of out of the way here. Yep. But I'm um, just to systemize that. So no, I want all the girls. I mean, I all the girls, I want to go to Russell, but there should go. I I see right now in Wisconsin. There's probably two or three girls in high school yeah. that should never wrestle high school again. And if they continue down the high school path, they'll wrestle in college, and they may be good at 28, 29 years old to make it that far yeah. and scratch the the world team. But they'll be wrestling girls from across the pond that are 18 and 19 when they're 28 trying to make a try to win a medal. Right. Yeah. And they're gonna if they're if they're wrestling 28 year old from the country, they already have two three medals. Yep. Or they're going to get to the world team trials at 26, 28, and they're going to wrestle a bypass girl like a media or one of my girls or some other girl and get the crap kicked out of them because they've been peaking to be the best in the world the whole their life, not peaking for every Saturday's. Yeah. Right. Doomed. Right. You know, so that's what's going to happen. And so, um, and they're like, Oh, the boys do it. The boys do it. And well, if you take 
the millions of boys that go into high school and maybe the two that go into college and then mm-hmm. the one that makes it out of college, the rest of not a very good system. No, no. I mean, if you're if you're investing all those athletes into high school and youth in high school, and then you have very little going to college, obviously. Yep. Right. Correct. And, and then making and then making it out of college, and then making the Olympic, and then making making uh, avail, making uh, like a NCAA level, even you know, competing. You have to be make the world team, but be competitive. Yep. It's, it's, it's virtually nobody. Two percent. And it's these often he's like these Bo Jacksons of the world. Right. These freaks of nature. Anomalies. You know? Yep. Yeah, anomalies. You take the, you take the highs and lows out. And what's your mean daily income? Well, that's your business. Well, they ain't doing so hot. Right. If 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 college wrestling was the savior of freestyle, then why do we start RTCs? <laughs> then why do we have this? Why what happened? You know, the only reason we did good, the only thing that happened at freestyle wrestling in the United States was they brought back Cadet and Junior World Team tra- uh, Worlds. So then young guns and Pinnacle and all these other clubs I, mean, I can't think of right now. AWA now, obviously, they're trying, they're teaching the kids at youth age freestyle. Mm-hmm. So they have more hours of freestyle than at the youth age. They're going into college all the freestyle. They ain't teaching no goddamn freestyle, these RTCs. I mean, you ever been to RTC practice? Come on. No, I, I've no. been to enough of them where some are. I, ASU is, or maybe Pinnacle's doing, or maybe our, maybe Minnesota's doing a leg lace two, two or three times a week. I don't know. But I've never been to a, even an RTC practice that I thought was a freestyle. I've never been to an RTC, RTC practice that I thought was even remotely a freestyle practice. You know, I was like, it's just wrestling and to do some leg laces. Right. You know? And so with that said, it's like, it's because of the private sector. The private sector. What's RTC? They're private. Private money, Correct. funding. It's not even tied They're to the school. They're private club, in essence, inside the, in the college system. Yep. You know? Right. If the college was a part of the system, the Olympians, they wouldn't have these guys. They wouldn't have. They wouldn't need RTCs because right. they wouldn't have the rules about not training with kids. You can't train with this kid. Blah blah. blah all that. All that stuff. Yes. With the RTC model, right? Right. Two thousand seven, Greco wins worlds. What happened? Freestyle didn't score a point. You know what they did? Very next year, two thousand eight, had the freestyle summit, and they had the RTC model because they knew they had to get around the NCAA rules. Yeah. And that's, but then by that time, we just started with. I was in two thousand, wherever it was. The, the 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 worlds came up, and those young guys come cadets started coming through the system yeah you know yeah yep. you know and then so and then the the, the stevensons and all that stuff back in the day lees and all that and now you look at those guys we've got with spencer lee it's like well he makes the olympics i don't know i don't know man i don't know i don't know i don't know so so with that said it's like you know so that's where it's like you know with the girls it's like I, it's it's you're gonna have to choose you have to choose what do you want do you want and only in America do we have Walmarts and all you can eat buffets. And that's yeah. what we're used to. Oh, I can win. I can do it all. I, yeah. can, I can eat the Twinkie and be shredded. And that's what people want. That's what mom and dad want. Yep. And what am I doing? Come on, get real. <laughs> and so you look at you look at what what are sport and with for Greco now, with the with the gymnastic comes into play. Mm-hmm. You think to yourself, well, you think what 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 are sport in the United States was the worst in the world? At, at like an Olympic sport. Yeah. And how and they and then they turn it around, and begin the best in the world. What did they do? Well, you look at gymnastics. Gymnastics was the worst in the world. Yep. Hey, Barbara Bell Caroli was a boxer. Yep. Never uh, was a gymnast. His wife was, I think, a gymnast or whatever. Except from Romania, they were kicking butt. And they come over here and they said the first thing they did is they changed the colleges to Olympic level scoring. So we had our own scoring system, like mm. AU stuff. We're like a real and I don't know, I don't know like what the, what it was, but yeah, you know, they right. changed it to Olympic scoring. Right. So that's the first thing they did. The second thing they did is they developed like a top, um, a system of, of, of actual acquisition athletes in a private sector to train them from youth on to be Olympians. Yep. Like they do over all across the world. Yep. And then they, then now they have this thing, top testing for the girls and they kind of had that for the boys as well. And so what they do in my, 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 my we've had people in my family are in the business and, mm-hmm. and we have had family in the top testing. And now I talk to the boys' coaches just at the OTC because they big camp there, and he's all these little kids walking around around, and I, I'm like, they look like they're six years old to me. Yeah, like all they're, they're, they're like they're eleven and twelve. I'm like, holy crap, holy you know. Shit, they're and small. um, so we're talking, you know, when you're when you're around twenty two year old men all day, and you see these little kids walking around, it just feels right. weird, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I was I was saying, can I talk to you guys? You know, like you know, I I got the girls just now, you know, I tell them to talk to you. I just want to make sure, you know, what, what they're doing because their system's a little different. Yeah. And I say to them, you know, so what are they do it. So what they do is they're the worst in the world. And they brought a book really those stuff. And the boys really do that. They obviously when they change the girl, change the boys scoring system. Kind of felt the same idea. But they they but they reached out to the private sector. Yeah. To solve the problem. 
And they mm. brought out a private sector club in. They said, "Here's what we're going to do for training and blah blah blah." Yeah. They create all these different rep, all these different places. So like high school wrestling would be like there's a there's a, like a like a lower level of gymnastics where people go to gymnastics. They go to one two days three days a week four days a week. Yeah, but they're, but they're not able to be good or super because you know you can't be twenty feet tall and be a gymnast. Right. You know? Right. And so. So they go in this, I forget what it's called. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's Aspire, it's what it's called. Anyways, yeah. um, it's like for all the like recreational gymnastics. Yep. So they create yep. that. So they can go compete in a, a like, my, a like, you know, that's high school wrestling. Yeah. Right. So, but then they do it. Then they have the high level girls that they're not, they're, they're like three, four, they're like four, five, six, eight, nine, you know, four, five, six years old, the boys do. And they go to this testing and they measure them to make them climb robust stuff. Yeah. And they have a competition so for the boys though. They have a competition and they say, okay, if you score these many points or whatever, we're going to grab those top eight, like all America's kind of sounds like. Yeah. And they do this term, they do this competition in the fall. Then they put them like on a so-called team or a, a, a training, like a camp yep. or a training deal. I call it a national team, but they don't call it that. And so the girls use top testing, the boys use this, but same idea. Is they grab the athletes that are that show potential, yeah, because they can do certain things right now: climb the rope, flexibility, blah blah blah, Correct. all this stuff. They don't know how to do anything yet. Yep. Where in wrestling, we wait till you're good. <laughs> you know, we wait till <laughs> yeah. we see you win a state title. Yep, yep. So bottom <laughs> up, so bottom up theory is bottom up processes. You like in schooling, you can't go to second grade till you pass first grade. You can't go to third grade till you blah blah blah. Right. That's how wrestling is. Like you can't. You like you can't qualify for worlds if you don't win world team pros. You, have to you get can't the, qualify for world team pros if you don't key. do that. You know, yeah. Like in 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 essence, in essence, you can't go to college if you don't win state. If you can't go to you right. know, I'm not, I'm not saying it's like factual, but right, it's kind of right. like okay, well, like like if you're not good in high school, you're not gonna you know, you're not getting recruited, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. You're not gonna, I mean, if you're winning, if you're on JD four years, you're probably not getting recruited anywhere. You yep. know. Yep. And so you have to walk on and try it. Anyways, and so that's what that's what's bottom up. They don't do that to massive. They do. They take a four or five, three, four years old, and they check you out. And they sit and say, okay, you show promise. You show promise. You hundred show promise. Yep. Like, you now you have a couple hundred athletes. And they bring them in, and they test them throughout the year and throughout the years. Yeah. And then as they fall away, they're left with, like, the four they need for the Olympics. And then they, then they, I forget, like, I think eight or six or whatever for the Worlds. Okay, yeah. It's like, it's like wrestling. They, yep. have, they only get, like, three or four for the Olympics and a little bit more for the Worlds. Right. And so that's why they do that. And then what happens is the girls and boys that, like, well, for all kinds of reasons can't do it at that level, physicality, sure. mentality, just don't want, they go to high school. And the ones that are really, really, like, level 10, almost elite, then they go to, and they, they, they can't compete at the level, the level, the girls, the girls go to college. And now, even the most like now with this system, the girls like like our fifth, like our fifth or sixth best girl can win the Olympics and win worlds. Because we go with they go with like they build a massive pod of yeah. high level athletes first, yeah. and then as you pass down or out or whatever you want to call that or filter down, you fill in the high schools and colleges. And so now with that system, our fifth or sixth best can be the best in the world. Right. 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 And because again, and then when they go back to college, they don't know where to go. They know like, well, I can't beat Simone Biles. I can't beat them. And these girls, the girls below them are so good. So they're like, well, I'm going to college now. So now the college girls are that good because they can't, but, but they're falling back down no. in the college. Yeah. Top and down. now the boys, now the boys system is more explicable for the Greco program that I'm talking about because there's almost no boys. Like there's almost, like in Greco, there's almost, no, there's only one college, right? There's one college for Greco. NMU. NMU. And yeah. there might be, there might be another one coming up, but I, it's all talk right now. Okay. So with that said, though, in in boys gymnastics, it's the same thing. There's almost no, but it's like a handful, like yeah. a couple. Yeah, okay? right, right. And so like, so I'm so I'm talking to these guys, and they're super nice, and mm-hmm. they're like, hey, I'm in, I know I'm not admitting you don't have to lie to me. Say, oh yeah, everybody can be Olympian. They're like, yeah, yeah. You come in, but like, dude, you come in at eight o'clock. He's, I, I said, what if a boy walks in at twelve? And you're like, yeah, there's no way, no, no, no way, no way possible. I go, what's the age? Because they go, seriously, I'm like, we need my four or five years old. Damn. Anything after six is, is never going to happen. Whoa. Never. And we talk about, and we, talk, we could talk scientific now, with by the time before you're 10 years, then they're like, why? And they're like, so they're like, well, with the boys, the way the boys, the boy and girl's brain develops in the central nervous system, yep. we need them before 10 or 12 to teach them certain skills, flexibilities, and they can do certain skills that are very dangerous. Yeah. Because their brain doesn't recognize death and fear and consequence and all this sure, stuff. Sure. So you put them on a balance beam around all this stuff, like, oh, I'll do that. And they'll you get to 15, it. 16, you're like, Oh crap! I could I could die. Yeah, you know, 
And that's why the Olympics is 16 for gymnastics. Not because they care about the athletes. It's because it's not fair for a 12-year-old to kick the crap out of a 16-year-old. Because the 12, 20-year-old on, on the high dive, you doing high dive too, yeah. in gymnastics, because she don't care. She, the boy, they don't know anything. Yeah, you're right. It's right. like youth wrestling. How, how, when you'll just see this youth wrestling, you, and, he's, and he's, there's, these, there's these clubs out there, I'm not going to say any names. Yep. They get these little boys, and they grind them like they're all Jordan Burroughs's and Kyle Dakes, and they're all 10 years old, running around, 12 years old, and they're at Tulsa, and they tear it up, and they got black and blue eyes from starving them down three or four weight yeah. classes. They're going from 80 to 65. Yep. And they're like, they're the next big guy. And you never see him again. Ever again. Because anybody can coach a 10-year-old. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you can do anything. Like a bunch of cult members. So that's why they need them so young. So by the time they're 10, they're at the highest level possible. And then really from 10 on, it's about maintaining those skills and abilities so they can wrestle or come through, compete in the Olympics. Yep. And then they usually they, they don't go to college. The boy, like the you know, boys, like what do you do them? Because they they stay private. So when you go mm-hmm. to gymnastics, you stay where you start. Yeah. Now you might go like my sister takes her high level gymnast and sets them up to twins. You, she once they get to her level, she's like, okay, I get rid of them because she's she's got five gyms. She says, and she's able to train to high level gymnast. Yeah. So so most gyms do stuff like that. But what girls and boys do, they stay private. Their whole group, the highest level athletes stay private. They don't go to high school. They don't go to college. They don't associate with those kids. They don't go to homecoming. Yeah. It's more, it's about the sport, but it's also about the lifestyle. Right. And so it's all that stuff. And the coaches. So I'm talking to these colleges, high school, these gymnastics coaches, they're laughing, like laughing at me. And they're like, no, they can't be one of those college coaches. They're getting paid three hundred thousand dollars a year, yeah. And now they care about is that kind of sale. And all they got to do is take our leftovers because they got to fill seats. Watch them compete. They got to teach them anything. They got to fill seats. Huh? That's why because they got to fill seats. They got to fill seats. That's they got to right. make their contract. That's right. And they're like they, it, they go. They go, this is the easiest job in the world to college coach. But they, by the time they get these girls and guys, they're already done. Right. To the washout to the Olympic program. Yep. So, so anyway, so that's where the, the you know, when we talk about like. Bypass high school, bypass college, stuff like that. Who should do it? Well, probably not very many, right? First of all, we're not, let's miss reality. We're gonna, we have to have high school wrestling, we have to have college wrestling, we have all this stuff. But there's a, there's enough athletes out there that should not be engaged in those activities because it will dull their knife. Right. It will stunt their growth. So we talked, to, you know? we had talked about that before, though, too, where because I think that the, the stigma between what you do and what, you know, in like the, the validity behind it, because I think people hear about the, take them out of high school. So right away they hear oh, school, right? Take them out of school. So I think people yep. get worried about what's going to happen. Then I, the, so I sit and think about it as, like we, educationally? as well, just education all because the, I mean, coming in as a parent, right. I'm, I'm, I'm putting on the dad oh. hat, right. Putting, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the, putting on the dad hat and I'm not saying no to this process, but like when you say the things of like, you know, get them out of high school, don't do this, don't do that. I think people get, might get a little afraid just because they think, well, then my kid's not getting an education. My kid's not doing this. The, I, a lot of people don't understand that there are things for that in place. Like these kids are yeah. just being removed from education in general. The, they're, that's in place. I mean, talking to Macy when she yeah. was out at Colorado Springs, there's an educational yeah. program out there. I mean, these, these kids still are going to get an education. This the focus, yeah. the focus is, isn't uh, isn't on the education. It's to keep them educated. The focus is on the wrestling. So the education yeah. is there to keep them abreast with the rest of the things that are going on for them to learn. You know, everyday learning things. But college, here's the thing: is like college doesn't fucking go away. It's there. So these guys are adults when they start college. So what's the difference if you were to go chase your dream that you only have a finite window for, which we've talked about, right. you only have a finite window for to be able to be competitive. College is there. If that's something that they want to pursue, they can still go to college because there are things in that like just traveling and doing this sport alone where you gain contacts, you gain people that in relationships with people that yep. may allow them to have some type of a, a flow or income before they decide to go to college or, or do something oh, like yeah. that, you know? So, so there's, well, not, there's not always yeah. just because you decide not to do this school stuff, like the normal way, quote unquote, it doesn't mean it disappears. I think that a lot of people get worried about that. It's let still me, there. Let me, let me put it. To, this is what I tell people. Well, our kids, most of my athletes graduate high school early. Yep. Cause they can't be stupid. 
First of all, you can't be stupid and do what we do because right. you got to pass your classes. Right. Because we'll kick you out of the club. You're dumb. <laughs> um, we'll get rid of you. Don't you can't be, be flunking. Don't be stupid. Um, and, you, and, and, you, and you're going to get education. You got to be. And our guys, are all, all of our guys go to college. Um, NMU is where we use, and it's a brick yeah. and mortar. Yep. And, they, and they work for them to travel internationally. But, like, we have other people that will not be doing college brick and mortar. They'll be doing online college. Sure. And um, high business where you're going to be a little bit of brick and mortar in there, a little bit of brick and mortar on their off Olympic years mm-hmm. to get, because there'll be, you know, there'll be years will be like the post Olympic year, we'll have more time to do brick and mortar because yeah. there's nothing going on. Anyway, time. So, we, yeah. So, all of our athletes graduate high school, most of them early. All of our athletes get college educations. Um, and so that's, that's, just, that's, just, yeah. So that's, that's one thing. But I always tell people, like, what do the richest, and usually the smart, no sports, smartest people do. They don't go to public school. They right. go to high level, eighty thousand dollar year school or dropped out. There's high school. There are there's kids right now making. There's kids right now in folk style wrestling. Yep, leaving high school wrestling and doing this model. Folk style wrestling started this model way before I did it. Yeah. They have the private high schools. Right. How many private high schools? Sam, Blair, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Giving scholarships. $60,000 a year to go to Sam. $80,000 a year to go to uh, the Spire Institution. I think it's 30 some thousand to go Blair. Yeah. And they're getting scholarships. Some guy, the, like the top notch guys are getting scholarships. They're getting more scholarship money for, for a high, goddamn high, high school, school education. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> wrestle, yep. folk style wrestling. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So I don't want to hear these people say, oh, I can't believe you're going to leave high school. Uh, Dude, every sport is doing it. <laughs> Even football now are moving down to Florida to do that. There's a thing on Florida now. Dude, every the best athletes do not compete in public high school sports because yeah. there's a lot of – I mean, mostly because of coaching. Parents are not spending $20,000 a year on training, uh, say, for hockey, baseball – for gymnastics, wrestling's probably about ten, I suppose. If you probably added all the travel or something, sure. I mean, come on, think about it, right? Yep. I mean, you start adding all of it. You, you know, it's a lot of money, man. You know, go, I know. Go, 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 five, six thousand bare minimum, right? Yep. Who's going to spend that kind of money and then give them some program in high school with five or six dudes or some inept coaches, the science teachers getting paid three thousand dollars a year to ruin that kid? Right. There now, what be would be better? You'd be better off staying private. Might be a couple. And I and I, and I drew up a folk style thing a long time ago. If I was a folk style club, mm-hmm. and I want and I love folk style. Yep. And if I was like that's my if I was that was my deal. Yep. I would take my fifteen or sixteen old promising athletes. I would have them do Super Thirty Two Journeymen. The college opens in the in the I'm sorry in the, before Christmas. Yep. From from New Year's on, they would travel around the country, train at our clubs and RTCs because they could do that for high school. Then I would do a couple of, I would probably do some freestyle. I mean, I would do Greco for me, but yeah. <laughs> if they don't, they, they hate Greco, but most, you know, probably Greco. Yeah. Then do some international stuff. And then they hate freestyle too. A lot of them do say freestyle too. Well, then, then, then you spend all that time getting fat, eating, growing, and jacked. Yeah. Not looking like an emaciated idiot at <laughs> high school state. Right. And then you go in the spring and you do all the postseason stuff. <laughs> and hopefully you do freestyle and do a bunch of freestyle stuff. Yep. That's what you do. That's what you do. Yep. I mean, how many, how, like, how, how many times have you seen these dudes? Because I have one. We have an athlete support time state champion. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm not going to get into that stuff right there because right now we have that guy, and I, really, and I love the kid in the family. So, but how much better would an athlete be if you said, okay, I won one or two of these now. Now what I'm going to do is go to college opens. Yeah. Yeah. Because really what you're doing, if you, win, if you win four high school state titles, let's say, aren't you just passing the same math class four times? Yep. It's the same test four times. You're not growing anymore. And usually gets easier. And usually gets easier with time because obviously you test over and over. Guys move away from you, blah, blah, blah. You're a stud. Yep. I mean, so it's, it's kind of ridiculous, you know? So I just think it's in our minds that we're supposed to do four years of high school and this, that, and the other thing. Yeah. Like, we're, you know, I mean, I think it's just our culture, you know? So I just, it went, so when people talk about leaving high school, like I said, there's a lot more to it. Like, and I'll be honest, another reason why we don't take kids in, we bring them in. Is you you just you just can't be a good athlete. You you, I mean, you can be smart, right? Great A's, yep. Great wrestler, yep. Mister Everything, and you could be socially unawkward, scared of your own shit, kind of thing. You know, yep. unable to cook your own food. And you got to be my mom every two seconds, and <laughs> you know all this kind of stuff. There's a lot more to yeah. the lifestyle. Yep. You gotta have. You gotta be. If you're 15 or 16, your brain's gotta be a 2022. I just made this comment the other day to someone that uh, um, I might have been a coach, Machek, but uh, 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 parents ruin good athletes. You know, so the 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 demographic and how how parenting has changed in general, the landscape of parenting, I guess you could call it, 
It's completely different from how. So so now so okay. For example, college college um, professors, they get phone calls from students' parents all the time. Their parents. We're talking about kids that are adults that are supposed to. I mean, not yeah. supposed to be able to just take care of themselves magically, but they're supposed to be able to handle yep. themselves in a classroom. And the parents yep. are seeing these grades, and they're contacting college professors. So now place yourself most of like if we look at the 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 demographic of people that we're around nine chances out of ten those parents aren't going to be doing that right the, at least most of the people that we know we yeah, are not yeah I it, agree. It, it's it's just completely changed in how things are 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 handled from a parent to a child now as far as helicopter parenting or uh there's a new term now it's not helicopter parenting anymore it's something different where it's like they step in the middle, like they control everything, huh. you know, kind of thing. Huh. So there's a new, different, new level of this that kind of stinks because so going back to what you were talking about as far as, you know, development and and allowing mm-hmm. these kids like gymnastics and things like that. Well, well, Tommy and, and Jane wanted to said they wanted to do this. Well, that that's fine. And like you said, mm-hmm. the, all these other sports are good. You know, I'm going to start coaching soccer yeah. again pretty soon. That's it's important for cool. these kids to stretch out and do things. But at the same point, though, too, it's like if there if there is something that your child is allow them to follow their dream. Right. If you yeah. if you have the means to be able to harbor that type of thing for the kid, allow them to follow that because that's their dream, not yours. Not you know. You know, know. It's, it's funny you say that because you know. I, uh, so in Greco, I'm like uh, I, I got right, right, forget. Yep. Is that soccer? So we we so the number one sport I want a guys playing when they're young yep. is soccer. Yeah. Because first you run like forty miles. Is forty miles? Is it forty miles? Like, how long? How many miles did you run? Like, like a, a, is it like forty miles a game? It's they, like 36, they to, thirty-six to forty, somewhere around in there. Yeah, I believe it's, it is. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Yep. And it's like half it's sprinting or something. And so and it's last uh, But for me. Um, all the foreigners do it and they have great Greco is all about the, well, I mean, I think a lot of sports are about the footwork, obviously, right, right. you know, yeah. tennis, let's swimmer, tennis right? would be a good, footwork yeah, ten, I mean, all that stuff, be football, baseball, yep. but Greco, it's so important to have good footwork. If you're a clot hopper, like you can't be a clot in Greco, like right. you cannot, you have to be an, in freestyle too. You have to be an athlete. Free, folks don't so much. I mean, it helps. And that's why the best right. athletes make the best wrestlers, right. you know, wrestlers don't make good athletes, best athletes, the best athletes make good wrestlers. Yep. And we can argue about that super easy, but that's not here today. But with that said is we love soccer. I love my guys playing soccer. Yeah. Hey, guys. Send I'm, it. Honestly, I want them done by eighth grade, though, because there's it, I tell you what. I want them done by eighth grade. <laughs> well, by eighth grade, because what happens is it's a dangerous sport, you yeah, know. Number is. one sport for ACL tears. Yes. You know. It is. It in is. The I'm not sure if worldly, but in the, in the United States, I don't know why that is, but. I'm going to start, I, I'll start putting some stuff together and you send them to me for some speed work, some, some footwork and we can. Well, that, I'd say that's why, I mean, mm-hmm. it, 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 it wrestlers get a little lazy in their footwork, you know? Yep. So we love that stuff. Yep. But, um, but no, it, with the wrestling thing, it's like what you said, it's like, we just have, I would push this model. We just happen to be doing it in Greco. Yeah. I mean, we just, I mean, I would, if I was teaching soccer, I mean, obviously there's private soccer and blah, 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 blah. Um, and what, and then what, and, and, and so in the Greco community, a lot of people are like really mad, not mad, but we argue. And I'm like, Oh, well, what about this? And I'm says, Hey, what you've been doing hasn't been working. Right. And they say, Oh, what about this guy? Want a medal? That guy want a medal. Okay. You named off three dudes in the last hundred years. Yes. So let's take out the highs Yep. and let's take out the lows. Yep. What's our average daily deposits, weekly to monthly deposits? No money, buddy. Meat and potatoes. We'll lose the money. Yeah. <laughs> Pay it out. So what did freestyle do? Well, they started wrestling freestyle younger in the private sector. Yeah. And they, and they went in, preloaded in college, most of them. Some of them are like Burl's after college, but his stuff, but watch Burl wrestling college. He hadn't changed since he's been a kid. Right. Last doubles, last doubles. You know, his style has been tweaked through the years, but it, but he's been him. He's been, a, he's an athlete. He's yes. an amazing athlete. So Correct. he, he, so he, he's there, his style, his, his style is like, or he, or he was freestyle naturally. Yep. Same thing with, same thing with Gable Stevenson. Mm-hmm. Naturally, you know that's his great athlete, and his style of wrestling happens to be that he's not leg riding or not leg riding and crab nope. riding dudes, you know, which is actually really good. And which, like, I mean, which is still very popular in freestyle. Um, actually, in Greco too, if we get into Greco talk too, but people mm-hmm. don't know Greco very much. We do a lot of that stuff in Greco too. So, but anyways, um, but uh, you know, that's what you know when you talk about these athletes. It's like, you know, we be doing this no matter what. Yep. You know, it just happens to be doing Greco. Now, 
when you talk about, like you said before, right now, I, I want to make sure we get this across, but you said what everybody doing this. No, I don't want everybody doing this. I don't want kids getting wasted. Do you know how many guys? I had a kid. I'm not going to say his name because yep. amazing athlete. I had a kid come to a camp and he came to a couple camps. And um, I can't even describe because everybody in, in the Greco community locally or in this couple of states, you know who he is. And I don't want to do that to the kid and the family. Yep. Comes to camp and he does this technique. I'm going to go, hey, you've been working on that? No, I just uh, did it one time with you. I'm like, a camp? We did, we're going to like three days, you know? Yeah. I'm like, dude. It takes years, it takes dudes weeks and months to learn this and they didn't do it in a light match. Yeah. It's the, most, it's the most complicated technique in Greco. <laughs> and so I'm like, wow. So Fargo comes along, he does it, sends me a video. I'm like, what the? <laughs> and I said, this kid here, if I had this kid yeah. for four years or any other Greco coach with no influence of folk style, because folk style does degrade your Greco. It just degrades. Oh, it just, it, it just, it's, yeah, it's a and, completely and, different and, 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 monster. Yeah. Yeah, and and and, and, it, and I will admit, folk style and Greco. If you're if if here's the hundred percent Greco guy coming to folk style, you see the foreigners. You've seen that foreigners come over to wrestle high school wrestling. Right. Yep. They, they look all they look, look all uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> they look all uncomfortable. Correct. Yep. You know. Yep. Yeah. It's the same. So it, it's a trade off. And there's and and, and as well is there stuff you learn in folk style transition to Greco. Okay. Okay. There there is, but we don't need we don't need to wrestle folk style to get that. Right. We're going to train scrambling in Greco. We're going to train level change in Greco. Yep. You know, but in folk style, you're not training bylocks. Nope. You're not training back guards and back step. So there's stuff that's what we're Greco is the gymnastics, folk style and freestyle are the chilling. And I don't mean that like in a degrading manner. I'm just saying yeah. the progression of techniques we have we have to do in Greco. Yep. You don't have to do in folk style. One like you can't do folk style actually. You know. Yeah. So with that said, so even in Greco community, people are like, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, well, they're like, well, what the poor kids and the kids don't need money for this. And I'm like, well, okay. And I do say, dude, we have athletes that are very uh, destitute, you know, whatever. Sure. You know, if I see promise in a kid, he's there. We're making it happen. Yep. We're, we're going to figure it out. I had parents one year paint my gym. It's an old school. And, and back then tuition was pretty reasonable. Yeah, it was super cheap. Mm -hmm. I thought it was cheap. Yep. And they spent so much money, and they spent a whole month painting the gym. Now the paint was more money than like two years of uh, tuition. I said, "Hey, you can pay. You're not going to pay tuition for four years. This, this I would have had to pay a guy ten grand. This is you guys worked here. <laughs> I, I, you guys did way too much work. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, I can't good. pay you up. I'm too poor. They care. They care though. Like, they, they, but they, they made it happen. Right, right. They made it happen. Yep. You know, I had, I had, I've, I've had parents that have degrees. Master degrees, they got good jobs, yeah, and they're like, Hey, and they you know, they got kids in college, and you know, how money goes right. And you, right. It goes I've had those type of people clean, they go, Dude, can I clean the can we clean the bathroom monthly for a little discount? Sure, yeah, sure. I got people like that doing that, so there's always a way to pay, yeah. Um, so there's you know, so and in gymnastics, they do contracts, so now we I, I've copied that in my club, I do contracts with athletes too. Um, one, two, and four year contracts. Okay. And then we name they, they, they get, and there's a doubling up process for money and all this, blah, blah, blah. Yep. They can get a bigger discount. But in Jamaica, they do that. Let's say you're super, let's say you have no money they'll, and they think you have promise. They'll put you on contract. They did it to Gabby Douglas. And then they should have got the money down. But then, and then if you get famous, you win the Olympics and the Worlds and you win all these medals and all this money, you got to pay back your trainer, kind of like UFC and boxers and MMA fighting. So have you reached out to any gymnastics coaches at high schools to see if they got kids that want to wrestle? No, by the time for me, like, no, I gotta have no, no. I mean, oh, I mean, like in high school around here, yeah, yeah, some gymnastics, oh, like kids. girls, you mean, like yeah. girls, girls, or 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 boys, whatever. Don't they have boys' gymnastics? No, no, not girls, not girls, because no. I'm doing something different with girls. Like, my whole girl model, my girl model is completely, my girl model is a little different than a boy model, yeah. The boy and the boy model, I don't need to because right now we're gonna have 10 this next year, we're gonna have 10 full time guys, really, in the room, not wrestling high school Ooh. at all, excuse me. And they're going to have four or five wrestling high school, and everybody trains five days, six days a week. Greco. Okay. Okay. So, so I. But so we don't need. I don't need to. I don't need to. And the reason why I kind of said the whole thing before about the well, you know, you want, you want all these girls to do this, but you only want four girls. But you're, I, I would assume that you're trying to get other people on board. Like, let's open this oh, up yeah. a little bit I'm more, like, and let's let's kind of make this well, a thing, you know, instead of just saying, well, well that one guy's doing it, you know. That kind of thing. Well, there's, 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 well, here, let's look at the best girls in the country. I, Kennedy Blades never wrestled in high school. I mean, yep. either one year. Yep. Mason Kilty, one year. One year. Yep. Uh, well, one or, one or two years. 
Um, I, I mean, in the, in the boys' divisions, you yeah. know. Yep. Um, yep. They interviewed Macy. Macy, I'm good, you know, and she, and by her own word, no, she would never wrestle high school or college, no matter what. Yeah, she no said the same thing with me. Blake, just, well, she just won't. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, I just talked to, I just talked to some senior level girls at the OTC. They're just we're associates, friends. Where they're like, yeah, you know, I might, I might wrestle for this college one or two tournaments just to help them out, you know, but, but yeah, I'm not going back to college. Yeah. I'm not going to practice there. I'm not going to show you, you know, it's just, a, it's just two different levels, you know, now. So that's, you still have to have, you still have to have high school wrestling. Yep. You still have to have college wrestling. We had that. We need more high school wrestling. We need more college wrestling. All, all boys and girls. That's not what I'm saying. And we need, I'm hard to behind that. What I'm saying is mm-hmm. you better know your role as a high school coach, know your role as a college coach. Now, I don't care what division it is. Yep. If there, if there's, if you, if, if you if if you see a promise in a kid, now the division one might be a lovely story for some good because kids do aspire to be a division one national champion. Yeah. Now, if you want to be and you love folk star wrestling, I would still bypass high school, but I would find and go into like wherever you want to go to college at Iowa, Minnesota, I don't know, wherever, you know, where, yeah. Wisconsin, Penn State, or Penn State, whatever, you know, that's a cool thing right now. Yep. And I would say, what's it take to be there? And I would dedicate my whole youth and high school career. To accomplishing the things I need to accomplish to be at Penn State to get there, it, and, and I'm guessing wrestling in Wisconsin for four years isn't going to help that a whole lot, right, right, you know. Right now, now maybe, no, maybe depending on depending on the athlete, depending on the athlete and their growth and their maturity and blah blah blah. It could, I mean, all that matters. You know, there's all a lot of, of working parts. You just don't grab a kid. Yeah, you can't walk and talk. Pull them out of high school. You know, we're talking about like in gymnastics, we're testing these guys. We're physically testing these guys. We're doing all these tests, looking at them, saying, okay, this kid has ability above and beyond the natural scope that we could aspirate and in our system. We put him in this system. If I take the smartest kid in school and put him in pre-eligible, he only can pass the pre-eligible test. Right. I might both throw him into calculus. Right, right, right. right. Doogie Hauser. <laughs> Doogie Hauser. <on>, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I share I share the you I share these stories all the time. You see them all the time. Some kid just graduated college for a doctor. He's like 16 years old and become like a doctor. Yep. You know? Um 18 year olds graduating high college with a like mastery. Yep. Well then he used to just say to that kid, you know what? And we know you're super smart. But you still got to learn your colors first and for kindergarten. Yep. Or no, you can't. No, no, no. You can't graduate. No. How dare you? Don't go through junior high and high school before you go to college. No. They took that kid. That's. Yep. You know, got amazing talent and fast tracked them in a different system. That's what they do in all sports. Soccer. You're in the part yep. of that game. All for hockey. Yep. Right. You know. And the money. The money's there. Money's in, I'm in my day. T- job money is an excuse yep. money is an excuse it is there it is available you may have to fundraise do a broad stand you may have to get sponsored you may have to have a gift from the coach if i've seen like i said we uh, in the past and and we've had athletes we've had to do stuff for because i see promise and, and, and if, if it doesn't work out it's fine yeah because that's right. a part of the game that's business but during that time i grew as a coach i grew as a coach he grew as an athlete yep and we if, if we adapted for that. So I mean, if he does make it great, or she makes it great, you know. Now my girl thing only four is because I'll be straight out honest. You can train ten boys, yep, and you can get a lot done, and you don't have to supervise every little thing. Sure, um, they're a little different. The girls, I feel, need more attention to detail. And I think they appreciate that more, or or, or, or the high the higher level girls, yeah, higher level girls and and boys, like my high level boys don't want to train with beginners, and <laughs> you know, like I would say, high schoolers don't want to train with junior high, college don't want to train with high school, but look, yep. But with the girls, it seems to be better if you really keep it like super special forces, and you'll know, keep hands, you know, eyes on them and help them out, and you know, and all that kind of stuff. If you, you know, it just seems for me um, that way. It's been better, you know, and then it's, it's probably personally my hang up right, right, that I'm right. not able to coach people, you know. So do you find the way I coach? Do you find it that so like coaching girls when I coach soccer, I thought I thought that girls were a little more just detail oriented because that's in their nature. You know what I'm saying? Not 100%. and they they ask a lot of pertinent questions. They weren't asking waste yep. of time questions, but you spend more time doing that. Whereas the boys, you're like, go do this, okay. You know, then yep. go do it. You know, like the girls are like, okay, but why, why shouldn't I do it this? How, what if I did this way? You know, then it's, mm-hmm. it's good stuff. 100%. I, that's it's good why. stuff. That's why 100%. Right. 100% is why. Right. Yep. And I think, it's, and for me, we got to get the place. I'd rather have one successful athlete than 10 or kind of half asset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Don't half ass a whole asset. Yeah. Whole ass, the whole and thing. honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like, 
I'm not from OCD, but I'm like, we're not moving on till we get this right. Right. You may never. <laughs> And right. the girl's like, I'm never doing this. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I want you to know it. Oh, you need to get thrown away. You need to throw good it away. Stuff. The boys are like, like the boys still just, you know, just run to the wall, and keep bouncing around like a goddamn robot. The know? whole time. They might ask after about 20, 30, can we stop yet? And you say no, then they'll yeah. just keep running again. And the boys are eating dirt, picking their nose. They're just, they're just boys. <laughs> the girl's brain's way far too developed in the, you know. Like, the boys don't even think about asking questions. So it's funny they asked, like, they yeah. asked me what I want to coach, like especially coming in because I'm not going to start like head coaching. I want to I want to get into the program a little bit and just see how these guys kind of work. But I, they said mm-hmm. that we we right now we only have we don't we have only uh, this group age group of boys and this age group of girls. They're all young. It was like 10, 12, 11. And I was like, no. Okay. I said, hey, girls, hands down, send me to the girls' side. Twelve. 12, 11 girls side. I said, I cannot deal with little boys at 10, 11, 12 wanting to just run around and scream. And a lot of them are already kind yeah. of zeroed in because this is a traveling team, but it's just like, yeah. it's just the brain power is just completely oh different. God. Give me 12 of you, please girls. Thank you. Well, here, like you said, I'll we'll, like, we'll get like, we have girls practice. I'm like, Hey, this is it. We have a fight. We have, I think I do these things like five minute clocks, but five minutes o'clock. Yeah. Five yeah. minutes. We're going to sing. Right. Yep. And the girls are like boom, 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 boom. They're working on it, like you know, like just like right. pummeling it through. Beautiful, it's great, you know. And then if they don't, they'll, and if they hey, if they can't, they right will ask, like you said, yeah, ask, ask questions, questions blah, blah blah blah. Yep. There's immediate conversation. Yep. I can say the same thing for the boys, <laughs> and I go down. I'm like, guys, what are you doing? Yeah. I go, we can't figure it out. I'm like, wait, <laughs> you say something. I'm it's right here for three damn minutes. <laughs> then me kind of kicking the soccer ball around. Oh. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like yeah, that's why. It's good shit. You know, and honestly, yeah, yeah, you don't need ten girls. But I, and another thing was, I, I, and I think a lot of it was is the, the way I had the room set up with the size of the girls and stuff lately. Yeah. I was like, we had three and four, and it worked out really well, and we're down to three now, and. um it just happened and worked that way. And it just, I, I really don't see doing more. It's just, I look at my workload. Um, cause I do like a lot of dart fishing, yeah. you know, like a uh, video, blah, blah, blah. Yep. And I'm like, I, I can't do anymore. <laughs> you know, I can't, if, 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 I just, because I, 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 correctly. Um, and then I, and, and we have a different, when the girls do it, like a little different program than the boys do, like for traveling internationally and domestically. So they do some different stuff than the boys do. So yeah. they're going a lot more. Yeah. So I do ship them out to different places and stuff. But they, the see other girls that train with other girls yeah. and stuff internationally and nationally. So Makes sense. And it's easier to ship four girls off, three girls off, than it is twenty, you know, ten. Right. <laughs> and um, and there's some other reasons why, but it's just easier. But um, but yeah, you know, the whole thing with the with the gymnastics model is like, you know, so you have you have a structure. So gymnastics people, this way when we had the Greco thing, I talked to the coach at the DC, and we're all like, and I talked to smart people in the private sector. In the private sector, there's a group of us working together to develop a thing okay. and it's in the mist. It's, it's in the work. So it's not, it's not, there's a reason to talk about this may not really, hopefully it happens, may not happen. Right. But I hear these Greco coaches are like, Oh, what we need is more NMUs and colleges. Agreed. Uh, Agreed. Correct. But I'm not waiting. This is where I get to fight with them. Like you guys are excuses. You're making excuses. Yeah. Excuses about the money. Oh, there's no funding. There's no scholarships. That's why you go back to folks now. Oh, there's no colleges. That's why you go back to folks now. Grassroots. Um, blah, blah, blah. You go back to folks now. No. You make the, yeah. what do they do in gymnastics? What are they do in other You you provide the opportunity. You need yes. ability, which is the athlete. Grass you need hurts. opportunity, which is like training, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? and then you need support. The parents get them to for practice. Yep. Now these other coaches I deal with are like, oh well, you know, if they gave me a million dollars, I'd be a millionaire. Well, yeah, <laughs> duh. You know, if you had all the money and there's a college and the funding, it would always be super easy. Yeah. But so what? What do we? I and I said no. In my daytime business, we have. You know, the transmission thing, it's, I don't get too much, but yeah. we, if, if I build a transmission, mm-hmm. it's got to work. It's got to stay working. If it doesn't work, it's got to come back. I got to do it for free. Yeah. That's what I got to do. <laughs> and, it, and it's got to be 100% fucking perfect. And it's got to work better before it does. It's fucking broke down. Yeah. So when he's, when I talk to these other coaches that don't have real jobs or they have real jobs, they don't have like a business they run, they don't get it. Yeah. No. They, they show up. They set the wall they three hours get paid mm-hmm. no matter what they do. And I'm like, no, in the real world of business, you have to figure shit out. Yeah. You have to re-engineer it, come up with updates, new design parts, blah, blah, blah. And to fix that problem that Chevy and Ford have. Yep. That's what we do. And so in Greco, we have a problem. So what do we do? You look over and see 
What what do the winners do internationally? Okay, that's what they're doing. How can we do that here? Okay, let's try to do that here. What do we do already in the United States with the same situation? No college opportunities, no money. Right. And they were the worst in the world, the Olympic sport, and now they're awesome. Gymnastics. What did they do? They did this. And so that's so I said, well, instead of waiting for some God to come down out of heaven right. to yeah. provide the free money in colleges, <laughs> I we're going to do five, seven years ago, we started this. We're going to go full-time Greco. If I have one kid or 500 kids, we're going to travel internationally and do it the right way mm-hmm. and see what happens. Yep. It took me 10 years. It took me from 2004 to 2014 to get one kid to say yes. That was Austin Nutter. He said yes. Benji said, well, it was first Austin said yes. Yeah. Then Macy and Welker went on their own doing the freestyle thing. But we're all kind of in the go talking, we're all kind of the same age group. Yep. Then he had Benji go and Peyton go. And Kevin. But now it's growing, now it's growing. And now I got people who come from all the country to move here, shit old Bluebird doing it. Ta-da. So I didn't wait for somebody. And then I, I thought, no, Bacher's not waiting for anybody. Betterman's not waiting for anybody. They're doing it. Right. They're doing it. Now they have, now they have massive clubs so they can do they have 20 coaches so they can they're they're able to do ninja jitsu and all they do all kinds of stuff you know and i guess the jitsu is like the biggest money then, maker there is i guess but then they're, so, they're not gre- the, but then they're not greco dedicated then well they were they were but they want a program that's only greco guys they have a, like they'll have a facility where, like that like, don't have greco five six days a week and guys just run the greco seems like the rest of the shit's a distraction though but they're not but the but those kids aren't wrestling folks that are free though yeah Okay. So they have other right. coaches for those classes. Okay. Right you know on. what I mean? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I got now, you. I mean, from what I understand, and I talked to Bacher and them guys, there's a like Betterman's hired in this next row. We got to run all the Greco program. Yeah. So Max is running all the Greco, blah, blah. Bacher's running all the Greco, and he's got five, six, sorry, coaches running the BG, the Dinjitsu, and different different stuff and all that. They're doing online schooling, all that stuff. Now, so there's other guys doing it now, too. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, I'm the only one, like, only doing Greco and nothing yeah. else. But, but I'm only one guy. Wow, I kind of hung up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too lazy to do. I'm too lazy. I'm too lazy to do anything else. Yeah, we're too just, lazy. We're just sitting know? here doing a fucking podcast at midnight, Lucas. Like, yeah, too, too totally lazy. lazy. So, but, so, but that, but that's the thing, though. So when I get in a fight with, the, I get argued with the Greco people, and we're like, they go, oh, well, you know, so and so, in in 1926 and 500 years ago, won a medal, and he didn't start wrestling until whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, that happened one time, bro. Yeah. Right. Right. That's, okay. They named somebody else. Okay, it happened then, and then the rules were this. The rules were totally different then. Oh, um, happened. Okay, now you named off four guys, three guys in the last hundred years, mm-hmm. and we have millions of wrestlers in the United States. Yep, thousands and thousands in high school, and thousands and thousands in college. It's not a good percentage, buddy. Nope. It's not good. <laughs> it's and if you dude. watch those guys that won wrestle, they're not doing twenty twenty three Greco. No, they're not doing the Greco we're doing now. If you go like it, when in, like, in, like in business. The guy says, we say in our shop, it's like, okay, I, I we get a transmission in, it has a problem, an inherent problem. How do we fix this transmission so it doesn't come back? We have to fix that problem. We have to come up with a better way of engineering this situation or part, blah, 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 so it doesn't come back. Well, so what are we doing for Greco? We have to train. We have to imagine what is, and I do this all the time. What is going to be popular? And I'm sure folks out clubs do this in folks out. Mm-hmm. What, what can we do next year or the year after? No, we can be doing I don't want to do. Yeah. I don't want to do last year's stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, I want to do what? What? What can we do next year? They always be doing. What? How do we get ahead of the curve? That's so anyone. We have to train. That's anyone. Huh? Though. Yeah, That's anyone. Exactly. Though Business. you know. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. What do we have to train? We have to train this 2028, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so that's where with this model, I get so, I get so damn frustrated. People are like, blah, blah, blah. You know, like, and they're like, we can't afford it. You can't expect people to pay. Then how the hell does every other sport in the United States have traveling softball, soccer, yeah. lacrosse, hockey, and wrestling? Traveling people. football. Traveling football. Traveling yes. football. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then you have, and then oh shit, my kids can't even afford the pads. And then you got now, and then they look, look at gymnastics. And I asked, I asked, I asked, I asked the coaches. I said, "Well, who's pay, like how? You know, is there funding?" Blah blah blah. I said, "No, the funding is the parents' checkbook." Yes. And they go, "Yeah, some parents can't afford it. Too bad." Yep. And these coaches are kind of, I like them. <laughs> they're like, "Nah, eh, next." But they're like, "There's so many." They, but they, but but what they've done. Is provided such a massive pool of athletes. Yeah, they can they can dissect the ones they can. They're not waiting on one guy. Right, correct. It's yeah. not a very good. It's not a very good. It's, it's pretty. Big. I mean, every football team has backup quarterbacks. We, if you look you know? now, you look at some of the weights. Like even people are doing it to freestyle too. They're like, well, this guy's going to be gone next year. We're going to be waiting another 12, 15 years before we see another good guy. It's like there we don't have that pool. Our pool's this big. 
Well, I'll, I'll give you an example. You know. I'll give you an example. I mean, no, I, I mean, no harm, no foul. Because I do like some of the athletes that took the best. Oh play. yeah, for sure. Gable, Gable Stevenson steps away. Mm-hmm. Now who? Our guys can't scratch the ass of a medal. Nope. Now I just watched. I just watched some of the examples of what's coming behind. You know, like. It's rough, dude. It's, I mean, and, and these young kids are still athletic, so please, people, don't get upset. We're just basing this off of the athletic ability and just the skill well, set look, that we see the out back. there. You know, it's out the United there. States. I think, I think it's, I think it's sixty-five kilos in the men's. We still are horrible. I think, like compared to other weight classes, like, yeah. I think it's sixty-five or some weight class. That was we that still Jordan have a hard time Reyes. Left. I just watched the U seventeen. That kid in Greco. That uh, um, was that jo- not Jordan Reyes. Jordan Paul. Jaden Paul. Gene Paul, watch yeah. that kid. That was holy cow, man. Yeah, let's, let's talk about that. Where does he learn freestyle? At a private club. Mm-hmm. Yep. Correct. Yep. <laughs> now at a cadet level. Yep. <laughs> you know, and I and and and, I, and I'll and I'll say this: U fifteen and U seventeen. I put as much water weight in it. I don't put any like weight into it whatsoever. But I we obviously you do got to compete, and you want to try to make the team and make a medal, yeah. win a medal and all that. Yeah. But the problem with I I don't ever. I don't ever evaluate an athlete on their U15 to 17 years oh, because sure. no, no, it's a I puberty mean, fest. It's right. a puberty fest, you know, big time, but, um, or they just, you know, they win the medal and they're done. That's kind of bad. I mean, you're world champions. Like, you know, yep. can you imagine if, can you imagine, think about this, you're in high school, right? You're, you live in, you live in Minnesota. Yep. And you're a heavyweight. Yep. And then your dad goes, Hey son, who you wrestling fighting not to do? They're like Gable Stevenson, two time world champion. <laughs> You better keep it up, keep moving, boy. Yeah, right. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> You're like, not. It shouldn't be legal. Come on, that's like Brett Favre coming to play in high school football. I wouldn't let the kid catch his ball. He would, he would blow his hands off. <laughs> the worst. Mm. You know, come on. The seventh grade. If you win a world championship, you should be banned from high school wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> come on. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> You're done. You get out. <laughs> no soup for you. Yeah, like. Some, like <laughs> Like, <laughs> you know, so. some of these dudes, I mean, you know, in locally, I don't know about, I don't know about your side of the state, but if I get caught in that, yeah, but, but our high school coaches around here would be like, don't throw in the JV guy first year. Hey, just don't get pinned. Yeah. For the save team. us the Three six. Points. Save us the six. Yeah, save us. <laughs> <laughs> Here we got. We're going to take our best athlete, move him up to wrestle the other guy, win a match. I'm going to put our guy out there that get pinned. <laughs> Three time world champion wrestle. Mr. Mr. Wonderful, the best guy in the world. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I said, all right. Why'd you quit rest- guy says why'd you quit wrestling i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i could i could figure it out man i just couldn't figure it out <laughs> couldn't figure it out so what uh, you but got, yeah, you so got I, anything else you yeah. want to put on cherry on top of there no of i think i said i'll have to say bitch about whatever no. but i hear that I, I think it's really good i think you know I'm, i like i got so i got when i talk to you because like a lot of times you say stuff i'm like man people said like you know i got this kind of argument with a real good friend of mine really good friend real big Real big Greco Roman person in the Greco Roman committee. I'm gonna bring his name up because I don't, I don't want to do that to him. Yeah, huge argument. Like we're like, I'm gonna kill you. Kind of thing, <laughs> you know? Holy shit! But yeah, we're like, I talk to him about kind of thing. But, yeah. it's, but it's like, but it's always talking to him about anything. And um, and um, it it was about you know, it's it's about this. And it's like he's like you like you just said you're like, well, some people don't understand. You know, you want all of them to leave high school, and you you're not gonna get educated. It'll be college, high school, not gonna go to school, and all this and that. And I'm like, no, 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 come on. I'm still right. and, then, and, then, and then, and then this guy was saying something about something. And I said to him, I says, no, these people, like you said, they don't know. They don't know. It's no. my, it's my job as, as a record person to educate these people on, on the, what the best in the world do, what the best women freestyle in the world. What, what, I had, I had a pair of women's freestyle. They're like my daughter's doing this, this, and this. I'm like, well, they, so so far it has never worked out, right. and so far the best girls in the United States and world do this. Yep, yep. They're like you're so stupid. I'm like, well, are they stupid? Are they dumb? The best girls. I mean, all those world champions are stupid. <laughs> okay, they're stupid too. Okay, so, they're stupid too. Well, it's so stupid did, to do the best are doing. Did the Will- did the Williams sisters go to high school? Who? The Serena and Venus Williams. Did they go to high school? I don't think they went to high school. No, they were private school. Do you watch the documentary? Dad was a psychopath. Yeah, but that. yeah, no, no, <laughs> professional tennis, like at 10, 12 years old. Yeah, exactly. See, so that, so yeah, people, so, pe- so, I think people are so used to this, the, like the, the, the shiny package of taking my kid to the dual meets and doing this kind of thing because it's wrapped up in a pretty bow that they get to see on flow wrestling, right? Or the, that they get to see on something here's else. Here's what it is. Here's, it's that too, but here's what it is. They're so scared. 
their kid can't make it. True. You are putting they need hey, is, you are putting them into the abyss, man. I mean, you're, you're they are going into dark They're waters. So scared. These are the same people yep. that'll never make it in the business or in life anything special. Sure, sure. They'll have their white picket fence, their cat and a half, yep. and everything checked off the list. But not they'll be dirt, they'll be, you know, they'll be working poor and all that crap. Yeah. Here's what it is, here's what it is. Is they're so scared that their kid won't be successful at the highest level. Yep. They gotta have something to hang their hat on. That's why they go from bottom up. They're like, you know, well, if he can just win one state title, will them go full time Greco? If, <laughs> if if he wins one state title, maybe he can win four. That's really cool too. Well, and if he does that, well, then we don't have to worry about college. And well, yeah. if we go to college and then blah blah blah, when, you know, all that's It's like they gotta have something yeah. because they're so insecure, and it's and it's not for them. Right. It's for the neighbors to see. Yes. And yes. you know this. You it's know this. Holding... But that's what it is. It's not. And it really what it is, is they just don't believe in their kid. And they all oh, love my son. Oh, I know you love your damn kid. Yeah. Come on. Jeffy Dahmer's mom loved him. Yep. I know you love your damn kid. Come on, get real. I have some belief. It's about really believing in the ability of your kid. And the potential it might be. And this is what I tell people. If you have two choices, you can take this high school path and college path, and it might work out. Yeah. It might work out. But I'm telling you, it's not. It's it's I. It's just if I gave if me and you were to bet on all the high school kids in Wisconsin and said, yeah. okay, the high school kids, they got to go four years of high school and then four or five, whatever, five, whatever it takes for college now, four or five years, whatever. and then they, then will they win a medal in the Olympics? And you, we have to bet money on that, right? Probably going to lose that bet. That if I said they're going to do that. Yep, yep. But if I sit there and say, well, they're going to follow this other path, like or like say or change the masters, use gymnastics. Okay, all you do high school gymnastics, college gymnastics, to win an Olympic medal. Probably gonna lose one hundred percent of the time. Yep. Right. Well, let's go do what the best girls in the world do. Probably, probably gonna lose. Probably still gonna lose <laughs> a thousand all the percent time. of the time. Yeah. <laughs> but at least that is the most likelihood of success. Right. Because you're there. The most likelihood, the most positive way of success. Yep. That's it's no different when people are like, well, you know, you got to go to college now, get your degree if you want to do it later. Yeah, he's probably right. You probably wait to 50 years old, it'd be a little harder to go to school. Right. You know, go back to the, the, the top down theory model. You know, when you go overseas, those kids do speak two the languages because they learned it from day one. Yes. Yep. <clears throat> we can't teach our goddamn. I can't learn it. I didn't learn it. English. We can't learn Spanish in the United States. We can't learn Spanish correctly, yeah. you know, because we wait to high school. Look, we wait to high school. Look, There's a time frame. There's a window. You can't miss that window. Imagine this. Imagine you took a Greco-Roman wrestler from Europe. Yeah. At 60, at 165 pounds. Yep. Not a heavyweight, not a heavyweight, or 132 pounds, whatever. Yeah. 60 kilos. You said at 24, at 24 years old, bring him over to the United States. Mm -hmm. You're going to wrestle for Penn State and folk style. You have five days to learn that shit. <laughs> How good? Come on, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. In, in, that's what we're doing. Yeah. In the in Greco. I know. They're like, yeah. well, I learned the headlock from Tom in the basement <laughs> after school. I know Greco Roman wrestling. Yeehaw! He's a good Greco Roman wrestler. That boy right there. I, I listen to these. I, I'm not gonna say broadcaster names. I listen to these folk style broadcasters. Yeah. And they're like. God, that kid's real good at Greco Roman wrestling. Look at that. He did a headlock. I'm like, what the fuck is he talking about? Ain't no goddamn Greco Roman wrestling. It's a horrible headlock, anyways. Oh, Look at that. Two on one. That's some Greco Roman wrestling right there. Right there, man. That boy's going to be a star. That, that high school, they do a lot of Greco Roman wrestling over there. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Which one is that again? Dumb bastard. You what? <laughs> I said, which one? Which high school is that at again that they're doing Greco? I don't remember. Oh so, uh, yeah. Have it's you like you know? And, hey, have you? Uh, do you know about catch wrestling? Have you ever heard of catch wrestling? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, like back in the day, yeah, they, yeah. Well, like they, they, they did at fairs and stuff. There's like a no, like the no. Well, yeah, at fairs, yeah, yeah, correct. I thought you said bears. Yes. Well, I, my, it's my presumption. Catch wrestling is a lot like ninja, like a. Brazilian is just a mug at submission wrestling, right? Yeah. Or no? Well, it's submission, okay. but there's pins too, but the pins are one, two, three. So imagine W. I think high school, I think, sidebar, tell me high school wrestling with some of the referees we had would be off. Awesome. And they'd be like, one, <laughs> two. Oh, he's off his For run. three. Oh, his shoulder's Come off. <laughs> Come on. So that's it's so essentially it's the WWE, but like you know when you see those guys doing the like bending the back and everything, but they finish okay. it and catch wrestling like they don't stop 
you know, to make it look good. They finish that shit. Like they're going to break you. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> Oh my God. It's cra- It's crazy. Like hard wrestling. Check it. I'll send you some links sometime, but so yeah. it's, it's I like, thought I, I, when I seen, I seen clips from back in the day, I was like, Oh, this is kind of like a carnival thing. Nope. Nope. So they did it when they got bored, when they got bored at the factories uh, uh, in England and uh, Lancashire, I think is where it started. So these guys okay. would come out and they'd make bets or whatever. And they'd start pushing each other around. Well, it turned into wrestling matches. Right. Well, then sure. each time it would turn into something else. Well, they start betting on it. Well, it turned into money. Oh, sure. Then in, yeah, in yeah. time, as you get into these crazier and crazier like events that they have, it turns into the WWE eventually, right? Yeah. But it's where wrestling all started because this started way back yeah. in like the 1700s, the 1600s and shit like that. And Wow. So thinking about some of the stuff that they do, I mean, there's Greco-Roman throws in it. You know, there's all yeah, kinds yeah, of yeah, Greco-Roman yeah, yeah. stuff that goes on in there. And watching yeah. watching one of the matches, like there isn't a whole lot of the, like, there's still some pretty rough stuff, but they're not punching yeah. as much anymore or anything like that. But a lot of what they're using is upper body to, to gain control of upper body and their shots. Like they don't look like folk stylers. You know what I'm saying? When huh. they go for shots that are like, they look like MMA dudes. They don't, I mean, they're like, Oh yeah. Kind of reach, reaching just, down kind of thing. Just snatching a yeah. leg quick, but otherwise it's yeah. all trying to get upper body stuff. And even when they're on top, they're trying to submit and trying so to like on the ground though. It sounds like folk style more. They're probably putting the legs in and stuff like that. They like do, folk style type of... but they don't focus yeah. on it though. It's not a focus. They, they don't. Oh really? So like when they're talking about now with college wrestling and like, if you're going to put leg, if you're going to put legs in, you know, there's yeah. a certain time or whatever that you have to. There's new rules with it. I can't remember what it is, but yeah, anyways, I was reading on those. Yeah, yep. But time's sake, like they they'll use it though. Like they make it effective. Like they they're not just yeah. sitting and waiting with it. But it's pretty cool. I mean, yeah. I I watched a lot of it and kind of court incorporating it, kind of thinking about Greco a little bit. And I was like, all right, I could see where things were branching off and cousins of something here and there. But yeah, yeah. yeah. But let me let me get this in. Let me get this. Let me. I got two things to talk about. I want to do it. Break this y'all. So the whole thing is the you know, so I got this new if everybody out there is like, okay, I want to know what the hell this guy's talking about, or just like or wants to argue with me, so love to argue. Yeah. Is I got this picture I put up every now and then. It's called top down three by C it's like a little yep. chart thing on my social. And so people, if they want that, can mail emails and look at it. But mm-hmm. so what the system should be is this is in a perfect world, right now I know I two or three chart. athletes yep. in the United States. <clears> yeah. <throat> I know I know right now of an athlete's going pre-med. Moving from New York or something yep. to from a college, junior college in Colorado, never wrestled folk style, only Greco. Okay, he's pretty good. He's really good. Made a world team. Now he missed this year and all that. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. So there's people out there doing this already. Okay, but but on their own. So there's people with parents going from they moved you from Europe, you know, right. and their kid got born here. Like you and doing Greco. So there's guys doing it, just doing it, just doing it on the side. Hiring people to train their athletes. So this is already going Jesus. on, but at a really individualistic level yeah so but assist at a system level at a program level that i'm trying to expand and this kind of is already just from other people you know doing what i'm doing yeah. and doing i'm doing what they're doing whatever you want to call. but in a perfect world you get these athletes you know let's say between four and eight years old they're i going to expand it four to 12 years 14 15 14 15 years old they're doing soccer they're doing all these sports yep. and they're doing gymnastics and they're learning all this stuff and getting athletic yep you know and even a baseball rail, they're saying in baseball, the guys that pitch in the minor league world series, mm-hmm. never, even, never even scratch the ass with the majors. It's all the foreigners sure. coming to the United States doing it. They work on, they work on being an athlete first and then skills later. Yep. So from four to eight, from my plug at four to eight, we should be really teaching you guys athleticism. And I think that's best learned from soccer and other sports because it's easier just learn to play sports sure, yep. and gymnastics to learn the back arching skills and get that fear, get that fear out of the way. You know what I mean? You know me world champions, not world, a couple of, a couple of world champions and senior level girls that are 25 or older and they've made world teams, one world medal and they can't even throw the damn red dummy. They can't even throw the damn dummy. Wow. And I, and I had a couple of girls in there and I got them throwing and stuff, but it's too late. Yeah. They're so scared. They'll never do it in a match. Wow. You need to learn, you, you know, but so, I mean, so that's just, there's it's a little crazy. bit. So it's like, but uh, Hennessy thing singles a lot, feels a lot more comfy, you know, safer. Yeah. So, which sure. is good, but I'm saying, but there's, but there's, but there's skills that you should, you have to learn, you're never going to acquire. Yeah. So then about eight and be eight and 12, that's where you should learn all. I say Greco Roman first is um, if you learn Greco Roman level change, stance motion, Greco, because it's the same as, it's the same. Um, wording, but different actions and freestyle and folk style. Yep. Stance motion, level change, back arch, back step. And we have these things called hit blocks and, and yep. Greco. 
And so if you learn those things first, that is because it's a lot of back arching and negative action of the spine. Like, yep. you know, like, you know, you know, kind of scary stuff. Correct. And so you do that. Then, then about that age level, you're doing, you're start competing at 11, 12, 11, whatever grade that is, fifth, fourth, fifth grade mm -hmm. competing. And then you're, then, 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 then you, then you sit and say, okay, where's your ability and where's your interest and blah, blah, blah. And then you start doing some freestyle and some folk style. Everybody should, everybody should. Try I'm still, I'm still on that. I'm not telling them never do it. And people say, oh, you said never. Oh yeah. In a perfect world. I mean, like, like my kids will never do it, but right. you know, but the majority I'm not going to fight it. But yeah, go check it out. Go check it out. Right. Do that. But then by 14, 15, you start doing more competitions and you're training Greco Roman stuff, freestyle stuff, folk stuff equally. And they're kind of already doing this. A lot of people are, that's why we have great success at Cadet and Greco. Yeah. But then the secret is that 15, 16th extreme latest. So 16 is where I cut it off. Mm -hmm. You have to decide, are you going to go Greco or not? If you're not going Greco, see you later, alligator. Right. right. You, you know, for me, you can train somewhere else. You want to go Greco? You're doing Greco only now. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to travel internationally. We're going to write four-year plans for each Olympics. We're setting real goals. Yep. We're going to work on all this stuff. We're going to get you x-rayed. We're going to get you taken to like an endocrinologist, make sure he's working your body correctly. Mm -hmm. Where's your growth going to be? At? How tall are you going to be? How strong are you going to be? What's the likely level your weight class going to be? And you know, the rest of your life is 16 on to 28, 20, 24, usually quite do. We are spending that next six years getting you to your, your adult weight class as fast as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. No cutting weight. We're trying to get to, unless you're actually going to lose weight, maybe. Right. But, you know, we, a lot of kids got to grow yet. So, like, we aren't competing. We're going to take a lot of losses. We ain't doing anything to be successful until we can be peak out and say, that's the doctor says, blah, blah, blah. More likely to be 5'9", 180 pounds. Okay, we're going to get you to 82 kilos as fast as humanly possible. Yeah. We're not still there for four or five years. Yep. We're not going to cut weight down to 60, 65 kilos, 67 kilos, 72 kilos. We're not doing that. Why? Mm. We want to win at seniors. Right. Yep. Yep. Exactly. I'm not, I'm not going to get, I don't get, if I win state titles and high school college state titles, they'll give me a free pass to Olympic medals match. Yeah. You know, don't give me Sunny okay? D. I so want we're, we're training, we're training, So, so that, that's what should be happening. And that, and that's how gymnastics kind of does it. They say, okay, we're bringing these people in at four or five years old, test them out, test them, test, test them. And they're just doing rope climbs. They're doing a lot of non gymnastics type stuff. You know, how fast climb the rope? How many, how many, how many times are you doing this, that, and everything, pull ups, you know, all this, like, Conditioning training stuff. Yeah. And then throughout the years and all that stuff. And then as you as you don't pass, you go back in the back in the lower level, you mm -hmm. know. But it keeps this massive pool starts shrinking down. And yep. they call these pools 2028, 20, 2032. 20, yep. This uh, these massive that's who's making the Olympics. And then they, that's who's probably be the Olympians. Yep. And then so all these excess kids have learned all the high-level technique, fall back down into lower level skills of level because they can't maintain it for all these kind of reasons. Where we do is just the opposite. We change the Lowest level technique, the most basic technique in education, the same thing. Overseas, we're learning multiple languages. Here, we're not learning any language to high school. Mm -hmm. We learn here. We learn a double leg, we learn hand side single. The most basic, unskilled skills, they're, out of, they're falling forward in your face, head down kind of stuff. We're not learning taking people from over your head. We're not learning back arching skills. We're not learning high risk, dangerous skills. Right. And so it's just the opposite here. We learn the most complicated stuff last, not first when we should, when our brain's ready to accept it. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the top down theory is. So it, so the whole system here would be like, if a kid, you know, we hopefully we can get, all we got to do is get more clubs doing what I'm doing. You're still going to do, you're still going to have 97, 5% of your athletes go back in the folk style system. It's only going to be four or five, six kids from each club. Right. Well, hopefully, right. I mean, that's all, that'd be, I guess how big a club is, right? Fingers but hopefully down. like, you're like, we have 10 like me going, 10 for me, 10 from this guy, 10 from that guy. Now we have 30, 40, 50 kids doing full-time Greco. Yeah. So now what happens, by the time they get to 18, 19, junior class status, the guys coming out of high school and college came and scratched the ass of these guys. Now, the guys that may be doing both will build a compete, but the guys just coming in the show will be too late, just like in gymnastics. Yep. You, you're, not, you're not coming out of high school and college going in because it's too late. So hopefully we create that same system that our guys going full-time or you know training yeah. at, say, 16 full-time, they're so good. It. Does he, he, it's not even worth your time trying if you're coming going to high school and college. Yep, yep, right. And then the guys we kick out that can't make it go down to high school and college. Mm -hmm. And then we have the exact same system in high school. So the mass number, it's probably a lot less than a lot less than gymnastics, but a big massive core of athletes that are banging it out to be the best in the country in the world. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be some doing freestyle folk style, um, filling that weight class as well. And then the bottom class will fall away. Yeah. 
Yeah. Guys coming in after high school and college. Right. That, that our, our job should be to eliminate those athletes because we're so good. And that's what Jim Mass did. You know. Yeah. Um. Last thing I'll tell you, but what, what do you think about the what do you think about the three point the three point technique, the three point rule? Um. Both, both, both you know, it, it, I I didn't have too much feeling on it until I saw a comment someone saying, "Well, we're like one step away from being freestyle." Do. <sighs> Well, get, remember freestyle used to have a three-point technique. Right. No, no, no. I, and I that was like feel and freestyle, days, wasn't get it? This. Why is folk style 20 years behind freestyle? freestyle when I brought the freestyle, we had an escape point. They got rid of you want to get rid of it in the 80s? Because they're like, wait a minute, takedown's one point, and escape's one point. And escape is a defensive action. We want to promote defense. Right. So what we'll do is we'll allow you to stand up and get away because you should want to get away. Take the other guy down. Yep. So we're going to take away the escape point, still give one point for a takedown, but you should want to get away because you don't get to, you don't get pinned. So the the reason is to create so more they, they offense. Get a, they should get folks out wrestling should keep a two point takedown. Yeah. And they should get rid of escapes. So that's that was another thing that 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 we had talked about too is uh, just with me and I don't understand three point takedown at all. I don't I, get it. I don't I don't understand it. So I. I know that they're trying to they're trying to reward and create more offense, but there's other ways to do that. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it could have stayed just a two point takedown, like you said, take the yep. escape away. But then at the yep. same point, though, too, when you with with any kind of like near fall, like near like I don't understand why near fall wasn't counted. Like you get one point for one count, you get two points for two count, three points for a three count. That's just me. That's kind of thinking of like you're counting those out. Sure. I'm getting those yeah. points. Why am I not just getting all of those points right away? So now you're creating a little more urgency from a guy on the bottom to get the hell out of there, number one. So he's not going to get the escape, but now he's got to come back. Now he has to score takedowns. So now he has even more of a rush yeah. to get out and score takedowns. That's me, and it may sound crooked because I, you know maybe I don't know enough about wrestling, but that the three-point takedown to me didn't need to happen. It wasn't completely necessary. I think I think I just think it's it's just it's like paint, what they call it painting a pig. Not that right to say. Yeah. It's, a, it, 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 it's like you know, you have a, you got a hole in the boat and you're putting tape over it. I, right. I, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Um, and I you know I'm not a fan of folk style because they don't allow slams and certain things. I think I think we do because I think you since you since you don't allow slams, you have lazy athletes and you have athletes not being creative so they don't get slammed because even right. in freestyle you allow slams right. and spikes and what they do they wrestle accordingly so it doesn't happen. Now you get now you get different you, know, you get different actions, more athletic action. Yeah. Now with that said, I can see him saying, Well, you know, we're gonna wrestle you gotta again, you go back to high school, you got the world champion wrestling on a, a, a nobody. We can't <laughs> yeah. have him killing somebody. Well, then I'm like, well, he shouldn't be in high school wrestling then, yeah, you know? Yeah. So with that, so there should be credit cards. But with that said, I think they should have two point takedown. I agree with you. Um, get rid of the escape point. Um, turn, re- keep, you know, you, what you could do is keep reversal too. Yeah. Because yeah. for folk style, folk style is about control. It's a different, it's a different type of wrestling. Correct. You keep writing. I know people hate writing time, but you keep writing time mm-hmm. because that will offset the getaway, uh, the escape point, because now I have a massive incentive to get off the mat to my feet because there's riding time mm-hmm. and I can get a reversal. So I can get a reversal, get control, get two points, or I can get to my feet so I'm get caught, I'm get, I'm get a takedown. And you already have a three point takedown. You have a two point takedown and one point riding time. They didn't, they so didn't eliminate. The I don't know why point. you get, get you get rid of the get rid of escape points. And if I'm getting taken down. I'm down there getting a crap road out of me, which is folk style one on one. That's the style of the wrestling. Right. That's the that's the rule set. Yeah, I should want to get away just for the, just to save that point. You so the, you already they, have a three point take. They didn't eliminate riding time. They shouldn't though. No, right, no, 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 right. I think it's interesting though that but you don't, have, you don't get that, that riding point unless you turn them. Right. So what they so you get rid of the escapes. Now the guy really wants to get away. Right. Now before like, the problem is now the problem the problem the problem with keeping the escape point, it really degrades the value of a takedown. It does, but it, but what's the incentive to like, it, you're on the bottom, you're only getting one riding point against you. I guess not. I mean, in college it's different. It's, I mean, I, to me, high school well, to, to, to make the jump from high school wrestling to college wrestling and not incorporate well, some of these college rules is kind of confusing to me why we don't do that. Um, to, yeah, I agree to, with you. to get kids ready well, for that. I'm going to tell you something right now. The college folk style is like, like if I if somebody said to me, "What's the reason college folk style and high school folk?" Well, high school wrestling is like JV football, yeah, and college folk style is like vars is NFL, right? 
Correct. I mean, it's just it's just the, the level the of the, like like I can like I can watch the NCAs in two. I can watch Division Correct. two or three. I can watch the NCAs. Yep. And I can I can be and I can enjoy it. Yep. I cannot enjoy high school wrestling. Oh. I cannot enjoy it. I can't enjoy watching guy run around the mat. And he's not forced to wrestle. So, so all that aside, that's high school. Like, but could you, you know, you take uh, like what WI they wrestle do in does. college? They do in college. They w- do in college what too. WI wrestle does? They taking some of the good kids, you know, the good kids that are in high school, and putting something like that together. I mean, that's that's feasible for me to watch. Now, going to like what like Liam wrestled his first duel against Appleton West. Was I enthralled? I wasn't really thrilled, but I was like, hey, it's a, it's his first duel, right? It's his first one. We're excited. It's his first time. And then, you know, he wrestled the kid, and it went kind of the way that we expected. But at the same point, though, too, yeah, some of these guys aren't going to know anything else. You know, that's where we are in a country as far as the level of athletics that we, we don't expect. There's some of the kids that go out for wrestling for the first time in high school. You know that? Well, that's where high, high school wrestling should be. Where you are, well, hopefully you're, hopefully you're introduced before junior high and junior high. Hopefully, you know, hopefully. But in high school, it should just be an extension of that, right? Guys like Liam, I just, dude, folks, does the first one just leave high school wrestling. I mean, if their focus is Division One or some extremely high level of folk style, mm-hmm. like you just said. I mean, I, I know guys. I know guys right now in Division One wrestling. Division one coaches are telling these athletes that are really, really good from high school. They're multiple high school state champions yep. and they've done well nationally. They're like, you're so far behind. You need to do this, this, and this. Mm-hmm. And it's just because of the environment. Like you said before, a standard, yep. the standard that was required where they were was so low compared to where they're going. Right. And, you, 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 you were talking about it. and so that's where you have to evaluate like, okay, well, I know a kid right now. We had this, we had this kid named Luke Liddell come up for Greco for yep. all the time for a bunch of years. Yep. And he then he was at a private school in Missouri and then he went to Sam because coach went there. Mm-hmm. Why'd he go there? Cause it was lower level or higher level. I think it's because of high level. Wrestling. High level. <laughs> I think, I, I think because he knew every time he wrestled somebody, it was well worth weighing in. Yes. That's what I think. Yes, that's right. That's right. So that's what I think. That's right. You know, so, so, but we, yeah, so I think they, I think the three point takedown was just, God, it's like a, like, it just sounds, it, I, I, I'll be honest with you. And everybody's like, oh, you hate folks. I'm like, well, I just don't enjoy the sport because they don't allow this, this, and that. I think the sport could be so much better if they would have tweaked some rules. Open it up. And yeah, open it up a little bit. But what that said is, um, I think it should stay there. I think every place you have their place to, to compete and show their skills at. So if you keep it in high school and junior high and college and all that stuff, um, I don't think you, t- I'm not a big, I'm not a big person in any, anywhere in my life where you take from one to give to the other. It's right. like, no, you, you add more, you yeah. get more. So, you know, and that's where the folks are there. Yeah, but I mean, I, that's where with, with folks, I, I don't know why they don't get more creative. Um, Cause now you say three points, I think freestyle, but I grew up in the eighties and nineties where the three point takedown. So and I think they got to keep folk style, folk style. Luke. The, and here's the thing though, too, is like now listening to some of the rules that were changed and people saying that it was going to be almost freestyle. Then all of a sudden, all these people, these are folk style people that are coming out of the, not woodwork, but you could see comments, yeah. comments being said that like, Oh, freestyle Greco is so boring to watch. The matches are over with so quick and blah, blah, blah. It's like they they want these matches that are drawn out that go for eight to yeah. you know ten minutes. They don't want yeah. they don't want to see guys wrestling together that are technically skilled enough to make a yeah. match interesting enough that it doesn't just end right away like that. Sometimes a guy gets unlucky though too. He just gets fucking caught in the gut and he gets winds up getting turned. You know, yeah, or, yeah you get a match pretty fast and lace, yeah. Or you get laced. Well, I'm gonna yeah. say this, and I mean this 100. percent The people that the people that say free so and folks are bear boring. Or freestyle and Greco boring are highly unintelligent. I don't care if they're Einstein. Right. Because if you go overseas, they can watch a soccer game for three days. Yep. It'll be one nothing. And then the other team will burn the other city down. Yes. That's how intense it is. Correct. And yep. I can't stand it. You know? So if you go to Asia for wrestling, I think it's kind of fun. you can hear a pin drop. You know yeah. why? Yeah. Because they are so respectful of the sport, they are watching the skill being displayed. So, yes. In the United States, we are very ignorant people. We are. They're like, we should spread folks out across the world. We should do this and that and the other thing. Yeah. We should do this and that and the other thing. I'm like, okay, this is the most <laughs> ignorant, selfish, dumb thing I've ever heard in your life. And then they talk about folks out being exciting. 
I, like I said, I can enjoy NCAA yeah. college level wrestling. Yep. I can enjoy age group level wrestling. So, you know, some things in college, like a guy runs around, like just be penalized. Yeah. But I mean, that's just trivial. But I'm just like, to sit there and say, freestyle, so bearing. It's like when I say hockey's boring, I'll watch hockey for the fights. Yes. I'll watch NASCAR for the car for crashes. Because yeah. I don't understand the damn sport. I don't. Even though I'm a mechanic. Um, I don't understand <laughs> soccer. I mean, I know it, but I don't know it, know it. Right. I don't, you know, I don't know it, know it. I'm not a, I'm not a, a soccer aficionado. Right, right. Like, I mean, if I was, I could probably really enjoy the skill of that ball moving around. Yep. You know, I probably could enjoy hockey if I could, I understood the sport, but I haven't taken two seconds out of my day or my life because I'm too lazy and too <laughs> stupid to read a book and watch the sport. So when people sit there and say free song, Greco boring, I'm like, that dude just got paralyzed. Yeah. Like we can legally kill people in our sport from a move. A we move. can literally kill people and you guys can't even slam anybody. <laughs> and when you guys do get slammed, you cry to the referee to get a point. They do. And what they just call it. And then you wear this headgear because you're scared of your damn kai for you. <laughs> Don't tell me how oh exciting. our sport's so exciting. It's so tough. It's so tough. Oh shit, you just slammed Timmy. You can't slam Timmy on a nice soft mat. Timmy, put your headgear on. Put your headgear on, put your mouth gear on, put double knee pads on, elbow pads, and go out there and wrestle that boy. He's just a manly stud. I'm like, take the headgear off. Yeah. That loud slams. And you might have something there. Might have you might have. Until something. then, folks, people gotta sit down and be quiet. So it's it's totally. Now I enjoy folk style because at, at the college level, they, <laughs> I'll be honest, at the college level, they're slamming kids. Like I've seen some takes yeah. on the college. Oh, for I'm like, sure. Shit. Yes. I'm like, Correct. That dude getting up. Yeah, <laughs> they're you they're know? getting they're getting angry with each other and they're slamming shit. Now. No, yeah. dude. Yeah, I'm all That's for like it. College wrestling. Yeah. Well, and then so like you said, then you had high school rules out about that of boundaries in high school. The referee, yep. the referees are gonna just cool. I don't know. I'm I'm lost in high school. You know, <laughs> I think I understand the I understand the college out of bounds rules. I go watch high school. I'm like, well, in college, like, why don't you call it the same way? Because they can't. Like, oh, they don't have enough mats. Oh yeah, I forgot that eight thousand dollar mat is so expensive. You're in this million dollar gym for basketball. <laughs> you can't afford two more feet of mat. I forgot you just got. A two million dollar weight system nobody uses over there. Yeah. yeah, you guys can't afford more feet of mat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Luke, so, Luke, you know, here's here's another here's another topic. You you have you see? Okay, you guys are in Kakana, right? Yeah, Kikana. yep, yep. We're in Kakana. Yeah. yeah, beautiful, beautiful, sprung floor, yep. safe. You can it's train awesome. hard. Yeah, awesome. Weight rooms right there, right next to it. Yep, better than it. better than the Olympic Training Center. Yep, you know. But there are probably a lot of D1 schools. You go to Holman High School, you can't even see down. It's so goddamn, you can't even see the other side of the room. <laughs> so we, we have these, we, we can we can fundraise yes. for these high school wrestling rooms, yep. right? Yep. People are, people are worried about talking to me about money. Yeah. Like, we can't, we don't got no money. Yeah. I'm like, a high school has a wrestling room. Yeah, that's better than most Division One programs. Yes, and they did a couple of bot stands to win some hundred, to win some hundred thousand dollars thing. Don't tell me we, about the money. We have something called the Cheesehead, though, as well. So I mean, we're we're doing we do have things that help along than a, other than a yeah, broad, but it's called fundraising. You're working right, correct? Yeah, correct, correct. So I it, mean, it, Wright Town. You seen Wright Town's room? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. pretty nice. Pretty beautiful. nice. Beautiful. So uh, it's there's so, a lot of high schools. There's a lot of high schools with beautiful rooms, and they're like, well, you know, and, and they're like, well, we fun rooms. We, we and, it, it, and it might take a couple of years. They're not doing it on Saturday. It might take five. Six hey, years, Lucas, you know? guess what else gets you those rooms? Winning state championships. <laughs> no, 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 it doesn't. It Holman helps. didn't win no state championship. It helps. Well, it helps. Winning helps. They got you know, far. We, we, they got far. I'm gonna them right now. You know how many times I see. You know how many times I see these these state. I mean, I'll go, I'll go my, brother, my brother, her brother's room is a shithole. It's like an <laughs> L. It's like tell the worst I. room in the night. Huh? It's a tell Chad is said I. I, I don't know. <laughs> but he, he complains about all the time. So, yeah. I mean, I mean, so I don't know about that. I mean, I think, yeah, winning helps. Yeah. But I also see, I also see teams that have been winning and they don't got shit. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah, so yeah, maybe, you're, know. So, but, I'm, but I'm, what I'm saying though is when they, I see, we, 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 in the United States of America, we somehow believe high school is this most important time of a kid. 
Let him be kids. Al, some- Al Bundy <laughs> didn't help with that at all. Al Bundy did not Al help Bundy. with his six years. Four, of, four touchdowns was yeah. it? <laughs> four, four touchdowns? He didn't yeah. help. He didn't yeah. help, man. Back, you know, I was, I, I always, re- it's on my, I'm at practice and I always reference, don't be, I want you guys being Biff and Back to the Future. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, who's that? McFly. I'm like, back to, and like, I've never, you never seen the movie? Oh. And they're like, the kids are so old, you know? Yeah. But honestly, I did so, and I, I understand high school, but I just want everybody to put it in context. Yeah. And this is what happens. You're a father. Yep. I'm a father. And my oldest son went through the high school thing because that was his level and that was his thing and he wanted to do it. And I we did it, right? Play yep. football, play baseball, wrestle, all that thing. But but I have I've I have had situations in, in, in the recent in the recent couple of years and through my whole entire season. And I've had athletes come through the room and we have had to get rid of them because I've not put up with it anymore. Mm-hmm. They're just pissed away. Pissed away. Potential. That's like somebody coming to you and saying, you know, Liam could be um, the greatest thing in basketball, baseball, whatever, so yeah. whatever sport, wrestling. Yep. But you're like, you know what? Uh, I got, I got, I got to, you know, I didn't do that. I, I, I stayed in high school and, um, or, or, or this, how many, I'll give you one. How many times have you talked to your coaches and friend Kakana and they got some kid could be amazing. And their parents are like, well, I never wrestled. That's bullshit. High school sports is bullshit. I mean, that's a big thing now. You know what I mean? Parents are like, I, you know, how many times have I talked to the local people? I, I'm not gonna say names right now. I just mentioned his name yeah. a little bit ago. He's got a real good wrestler, and he's in his pants. Their pants are so dysfunctional. They never did sports. So my kids not gonna do any sports. And their kids, and we're talking at a high school oh. super low level, and they can't even get the kid to practice. Luke, I see it constantly. My wife works for a divorce attorney, dude. There's so many parents that cannot. The, the high, and there are kids that are like, how, we're talking like high level softball players. And they're all sure. really good. And then all of a sudden, this yeah. this house comes crumbling down. And one yeah. parent's like, "Well, I didn't want him. I didn't want Jane in that in the first place." And the other one's like, "What are you talking yeah. about? You took him to everything." Yeah. Like, I did it for you. Yeah. And then it just pfft, all goes downhill. <laughs> all goes I, downhill. Not, I don't mean to laugh, but it, yo, hundred percent. But even so, even at, at so even at like say at a at a local level of sport, yeah, you, we have this issue with parents. Oh, I didn't do it, so they're not going to do it. Yeah. Or no, I was a touchdown Tony. Right. Or El Bundy. So my son's going to do that. Yep. Um, my son's going to play basketball and not wrestle because I played basketball and didn't wrestle. Yep. Yep. I mean, we, we see it at that level. So when I come along, when I come along mm-hmm. and say, hey, Johnny should do this. He could be an Olympian. This is what the best in the world do. Some are buying in, some are doing not. And I get nine, nine, obviously 99% of people don't buy in. And then I see so many wasted athletes. They're like, I wrestled in high school and I was conference champ. I did all this. And my daughter will do the same thing. He'll, she'll do the same thing. And my son will do the same thing. And then I talk to somebody else, like, we don't want our kids playing baseball no more because we want them to dedicate themselves to wrestling. They ain't have to do more football and dedicate to wrestling. Now I'm like, I want them to quit folk styles and become Olympian best of the world. Oh, whoa, 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 what? No, 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 not that. No, 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 no. We just quit everything I said to quit. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's never going to. So that's the thing is like, parent, like I said, the parenting paradox and everything that's going on with parenting and reading everything that, that that's going on online and, and taking all the lessons from oh my people God. online. So everything is, is a derived from someone else's like, like twisted thought of how we need to like cradle our kids. And you should only be doing this with them when you put them in this classroom. And then this type of daylight should be allowed into the, to the, to the window, yeah. you know, when, when they're reading at Crazy. this time of the day, it's like, <laughs> You can't be right, and there's there's no right and wrong anymore, so people don't know whether no. to scratch their watch or wind their ass when it comes to parenting because you can't figure it out. Everything's changing every day. Uh, it is, and, I, and I'll be honest with you. The clientele I'm attracting to my system yeah. it are people um, typically one of the parents was high level, like sure. D1 or something like that. Yep. Um, and I'll be honest, the higher level parent I have over the years mm-hmm. have been my best parents. Yeah. I had a situation where I have a parent that's extremely high level yeah. athlete. And I was really intimidated yeah. because I was like, this parent's really good. I yeah. mean, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like really, what am I going to be? I'm like, I, you, I couldn't even like, I, I mean, I had to ask to tie their shoes. They're so good. You know, like, right. they're so awesome. I don't. I would never wash my hand again. It's so awesome. <laughs> and I was like, because I was like, you know, so I'm, so I'm like, I'm looking at me. I'm looking at them. Like, 
what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, I was like, oh, this is the you know, I was like, so, and, but that parent came to me and said, no, no, you're the coach. I'm the dad. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you were, you were amazing. Thank what, you. You know? Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, it was great. But the higher level. So that's one thing I've noticed is this. Cause I have people that are super, super rich and people that are, don't have any money at all. Right. We're making it work. We're doing, we're making it happen. Cause I believe in her kid. Yeah. And, um, and but the the higher level athlete, or if they're highly successful in something, yep, you know what I mean, like business yep. or something, or yep. they're like a doctor or a lawyer. I mean, they're they're highly successful. It's genetics. They 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 understand that they might go to medical school and then never graduate. Yep, they understand that they they could do this this big endeavor. It might take ten years. It might not work out. They, they, the people that's that kind of be like this, like, like a, who am I attracting? And I, and I'll be honest over the years, I'm like, okay, what I, so now I really spend more time and I hate to tell everybody this, but look at the parents. Yeah. Okay. What, what are they like? What do they do? What, what's the, and then it gives me more of a feel like, okay, what the, am I wasting my time here? Right. Should right. I, okay. okay well, yeah. Or am I going to really push on this? And you know, can I talk to these people? And mm-hmm. not get made fun of. A lot of times I get made fun. A lot of times I get ripped on. The parents are like, oh, you're fucking crazy, blah, blah, blah. You're fucking so fucking stupid, blah, blah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God, I want to bring this bummer. Yeah. And um, all this, yeah. And, that, and honestly, that's happened. The majority of the time, people make fun of me or rip on me. But then I get the one that was a military vet or yeah. was a super level athlete. And and the ones that have accomplished something of extreme, you know, extreme. They get it. Something. They get it, yep. and they understand that it is highly possible, and more likely than not, we will never be successful if the goal is to win Olympic medal or world medalist level. They understand that there are probably guaranteed not that that's probably not going to happen. Right, but but they understand what we're doing is everything possible to make that the most likely that it will happen. Correct. Yep. And doing the other thing is just probably not going to help us very much. So the thing is, is that with the parents, and this is why I always say that par- bad parents ruin good athletes because the parents are the ones that hold the key. Where is oh. where where is the because they're the they're the ones giving the. The, the the brain and choosing the coaches yeah. and finding the right places whereas the the yeah. kid is is the they're the they're the they're the uh the rocket fuel they're the ones that are going right they're the mm-hmm. ones that are do, going and doing it you're just giving them the mm-hmm. little keys here and there to open up doors and that's all you should be you should literally yeah. just be a key holder and once you give them the yeah, key, you, you support system correct you, you let them open the door and we see a lot of it even now around in this area where these parents are living through their kids and sometimes the parents are living through their kids in an unrealistic value of where oh my Johnny I did this Johnny's going to be able to do it too not necessarily yeah. and nine chances out of right. 10 you can tell by 13 or 14 whether or not that kid's going to do it you already know yeah, yeah. You know, when I met, when I met Alston Nutter, I knew in five minutes, right. He, I, 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 just, I hate to I'm gonna tell a story, I'm gonna tell a story, but he, he came one night to a practice. I had his dad called blah, blah, blah. I was, he was there for, he was there for a practice, Yeah. but I'll, you know, I'll say five minutes. It makes it sound cool. But I go to his dad. <laughs> I just, and I knew Jamie from back in the day, just as a person in the area. Yeah. Never knew his son, but I was recruiting his son actually years before, but I found out I was, I was recruiting him actually just kind of watching him as a younger kid. And I finally played baseball, so I told you to fuck it. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do this kid. Right. And um, <laughs> and so, anyways, but I said, I go, Jamie, what what's going on? This kid's amazing. Yeah, this kid's fucking amazing. What's going on? You know? And um, and so we started to talk. I'm like, okay, well, it's, it's, like, this is what we do, and blah 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 blah. You know? Yeah. So the rest is history. But I, I like you said, I, a lot of times I meet somebody. I have a kid right now that is weird. And everybody will know, if everybody listens, they'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah. This kid is weird, man. Like, not weird, <laughs> like scary weird, just like cool. I think it's cool as shit. I like him. Yeah. Like, I, love, I love all my I love all my guys, but I love, yeah. I love everybody. I like they don't get they might love them, they usually get out, you get rid of them. But anyways, <laughs> um oh they get rid of me. Oh, they get rid of me. You get rid of me. Yeah. But um but everybody but this kid has got something. Yeah. And it's 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 it's, it's something you need, you know what I mean? Yep. It's just something you need. Like no, he, this kid doesn't, this kid's not highly successful just yet. Like he doesn't, he, the reason he's not winning, he just doesn't score enough points at that time. Sure. But nobody ever gets the best of him. 
<laughs> Nobody. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and and this kid is gonna be his gonna be stupid. His kids gonna be so goddamn good. It's a good answer. It's gonna be amazing. But it's not there now. But I'm just like you can see it though. But you can meet a person yeah. and you can deal with them and you can sit there and see the positive. Now he might hit hopefully he didn't get by a bus tomorrow and get, get slaughtered like roadkill that would be or good. quit on me yeah. and get a girlfriend or some stupid crap like that. Girlfriends, but, Jesus. Oh. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's better off with a broken leg. I mean, I tell everybody the, the worst injury is the girlfriend. So or yeah. a or a relationship or a relationship, like or even the boys, you know, for the girls. Right. Relationship. Um I mean, I'm not breaking your legs. You can be a fast recovery. So, anyways, um, with that said, is like you know, but this, you know, with that said, is like you can meet the kid in relatively short order to, to, to turn like, okay, this kid's worth getting a chance on, right? You right. know, just, yep. And it's not even athleticism a lot of times, all that stuff, but yeah, yep, but, always. Well, dude, hey, yeah. it's it's uh, it's ten to one. It's ten to one. Oh shit! And we've been going. Uh, we start talking. Yeah, we we've been going for two and a half hours. So we, I think, what you and I, because I got to run to practices tomorrow. I think we're gonna cut it off. So if there's something, yeah, I gotta go. If there's something you want to push right now, uh, plug, uh, plug something quick. I'm gonna roll some music while you're doing a plug. How about that? Okay. So yeah, I'll plug something. It's yeah, kind of general, but yeah. If it, well, yeah, whatever you got coming up. What do you guys got going on? I was like, yeah, just this. This we have. We, junior world. We have junior worlds coming up. We yep. have a real good team in juniors this year. So guys, go watch junior worlds coming up. Um, I think Abe has some guys in the team, right? Yep, I believe so. Yep, yep. Yep. Correct. Yep. We have. Uh, I don't. We don't have anybody from. Uh, we don't have anybody from Wisconsin this year on the team. But I have some. I have some athletes that, that are not mine, but the friends of athletes are throw Greco on the team. So we're really excited about this year for Junior Worlds. We have Senior Worlds coming up in September. Yep. And so everybody's just chiming to that. And then Wisconsin has uh, Peyton Jacobson, a uh, ringer's oh, kid. Oh yeah. Yep. Bill Cauley. Yep. Bill Cauley's personal athlete. Yep. One of our eight Fiji athletes. Um, went full time Greco as uh, sophomore freshman year at first year high school, something like that. Me as freshman sophomore year, so he's one of the Wisconsin's best, and he's 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 the real deal. Watch and him. So he's at he's at U three, and I'm the U twenty three coach of the United States of America. So I'll be I'll be down there coaching him. Sweet. Um, and the rest of the team, and, and yeah, and they're and they're moving they're moving our stupid tournament from Finland <laughs> to Turkey. That's what I heard. I heard some people had to switch up tickets really quick. So. But all right, well, yeah. that's been another episode of Parterre here with Lucas Stelt, guys. It's uh, one o'clock in the morning. We're getting the fuck out of here. Peace. All of our episodes are brought to you by Appleton Tattoo, located at 117 South Appleton Street in Appleton, Wisconsin, right off the main drag on College Avenue. You can't miss them. I've had some work done. Uh, I have a Celtic cross that covers my back that was done by Jason. We're not done yet. Uh, Jason Winans and crew, uh, the artists that he have there, those guys are the best in the Fox Valley. Um, they are definitely one to go to. If it's something that you've just been kind of throwing around, they'll make you feel comfortable. It's a very clean environment, very nice crew, um, and very willing to get done whatever you need done when you need it done. Um, you can message them on Facebook. I know they're on Facebook. You can give them a call uh, at 920-604-8289. And get in touch with Jason Winans and crew at Appleton Tattoo, located again in Appleton, Wisconsin, at 117 South Appleton Street, right in Appleton. Very flexible hours, great crew, clean environment again. Uh, I would not send you anywhere else except for these guys. Appleton Tattoo.